Welcome into the Cam and Strick Podcast, episode number 210. Happy Halloween, homies. Did you bring anything to eat today? I got a beef stick from my uh, I don't want that. Farm. I don't want that. You know that. what the first four Well, beef I stick? love those. It's got 20 grams of protein. I know it you does. You probably need that uh, shit. It doesn't have a whole lot of calories either in it. No, I'll, I'll crush the shit out of these. But I was hoping you like would have brought like a pizza or something. Why would I do that? It's Halloween, dude. Pizza for Halloween? And we are doing this way later than normal. Yeah, I know. We are in the afternoon today <laughs> and um, a busy morning for both of us. And uh, I thought you like would have brought some lunch. I haven't had time to eat Can anything. I explain something to so you? My, listen, my uh, my energy level, my brain power. I know. Although I take the fish pills from first form, I, so, did, I just took, so so I've been burping a little bit, and uh, I had to roll the window down. Just why? Look. Be- well, because Kate drove me here. No, why are you burping? Because of the f- uh, first form. It doesn't do that to me. Oh, really? No. If you do, you'll it's like you ate sushi. That's a good feeling. It means Dude, like, that uh, does not do that to me at all. Well, good. Like it makes you, you burp. Well, if you do, nobody we, wants to hear that. No, I, yeah, sorry about that. Mm. Did I gross you out that much? My bad. <laughs> Jeez. But look, look, Halloween to me, man, I used to have so much fun at Halloween. Mm-hmm. I love scary shit. I'm obsessed with ghosts. You know, I uh, I, I just, I love Halloween, dude. I, I miss trick-or-treating. I miss uh, having kids come by my house trick-or-treating. Yeah. We have nothing like no, that. No, because it's all old people. Is that why? Yeah, and, and like, it's hilly and shit. Like, <laughs> you'd have to be a cross-country runner to come by my house. Really? Yeah, because it's... I don't notice Well, that. because we don't live in a subdivision where our houses are right next to each other, you know, like yours. Damn, and so your ours house is, is spread- a pretty... It's a neighborhood. We have seven houses on our street. Then if you want to walk to another street, okay. you have to go up big-ass okay. hills. No, I've been to the house. Yeah. It's not that hilly where kids can't it, it walk, is. and the I'm, houses aren't that spread out. Yeah, yeah, they are. There's little sections there, and then you'll have a street there. So if you hit those houses, you're going to have a little bit of candy. But if you're a kid, you're, you're used saying to going the to, volume isn't there. No, of houses. not at all. If not, you're if you're going to load up, it's yeah, not where to no, go. No, it's not good for kids okay. by any stretch. But it's scary. Mm-hmm. Like if you like that kind of shit, it's scary. But what makes it scary? Well, because you're way the fuck out there. Mm. You know, you is can it, actually see is, the stars. Is, is it so. dark? Yeah, it's dark. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's it's you know you hear coyotes and shit. Yeah, like it's yeah. creepy. Like it's creepy out there, Andy. Mm-hmm. There's graveyards, like little graveyards everywhere. You know, yeah, from the 1800s. Yeah. And well, shit. I'm gonna miss Halloween tonight. Yeah, I know. They got a game tonight. Even though this airs tomorrow. Yeah, I and know. it's gonna air on a Tuesday, so we should just actually just act like it's Tuesday. Hey, did any movies fuck you up as a kid? Oh yeah. Oh my God, Andy. My mm-hmm. parents were so goddamn lenient, and they'd be gone all day. We lived way out in the middle of the woods. And all of a sudden, I'd sit there, you know, and watch The Exorcist. The Shining. The Shining fucked me up. Yeah, it did. Although I hate the chick in there. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know what's her name. Mm-hmm. She was just goofy. But The Exorcist. No, she's very, she was like very sexy, I think. What? I think, I think she's no, very sexy, if I remember correctly. I think she's like a supermodel. The Shining? Oh, yeah. She's no. the one who had the baseball bat. Yeah. No, she like, had if the- I look at her, I'm not like, oh, she's sexy. I'm no, like, no, oh, no, 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 she's no. Kind she's of a bad like actor, a, yeah. no, I think she's like movie. a supermodel. Her son may have had some drug issues. Um, That's usually the case. And uh, the guy is a, a very famous actor. I'm trying to remember his Jack name. Nicholson? Yeah, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, Andy. Good yeah. Lord. Listen, The Shining's <laughs> awesome. Stephen King. I love Stephen King books. Uh-huh. Now, The Shining's a different story, but I've read all, all kinds of crazy Stephen King books. Like, like It? S- it, Salem's Lot. Uh-huh. Fuck me. The Stand. Um, which one? Mist. Which one has the clown on the front? It. Yeah, that's yeah, it. We've yeah, we've talked about it before. Okay, we have talked but Salem's, about Salem's. Oh, it. Pet Cemetery. Oh, Lordy B. What's the age? Oh God, requirement? No, for those? no, 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 no. Ty ain't watching that yet. No, and I'm. You know how I am. With My that wife stuff. won't even watch the scary movies. Don't you dare. Mm-hmm. Even the girls. I don't want that to happen. Okay. Don't, not the big dog movies. Mm-hmm. Not the Exorcist. Yeah. Not fucking Pet Cemetery. Yeah. None of that shit. Another movie. You'll be, they'll be sleeping with Andy. Yeah. And you want to get your groove on? Uh-huh, uh-huh. They'll be sleeping with you, and you need yeah. to, you'll be miserable. Another a movie miserable uh, that uh, messed me up when I was a kid was called The Mask. It had a share in it. You ever see that movie with what? a share? Uh, what are you talking the about? The Mask with Rocky. Uh, you never saw that movie with Cher? Oh, God. Rocky, Bro, you, what, what am I doing here? Listen, do you remember? I can't even have a conversation. You don't with, like, remember cool that? Shit. No, man. I remember you, the mask with Jim Carrey. Oh, that's another one. That's another one. Um, what are you talking about? He was in Cable Guy. Too. He's in yeah. a number of movies. Jim Carrey was my favorite actor for a while, but no mask uh, with Ro- dude. You got to watch Rocky Dennison. I think was his last right, name. Hey, what do you think yeah. the scariest movie ever is? You will never guess it. Well, it's not Friday the Thirteenth. No, it's not. What it's, do you? No, no. It has nothing. Listen to me. Uh huh. Nothing to do with Halloween. Listen to me. The scariest movie ever mm-hmm. has nothing to do with ghosts. Jason, no. Werewolves, serial killers. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What do you think it is? Well, I'll tell you here no, no, in a second. No. What do you think it is? Can I tell you my other movie? No, that, that Andy. T- that, well, one let's more play thing. A trivia game. One more thing that fucked me up okay, though. Go ahead. Chucky the doll. Yeah, you know, I'll okay, boot that little. Okay. Fuck, <laughs> I'll fucking curb stomp that little bitch. So would I. Chucky, Although I'll don't say boot that, your mom D- like dude. Ass. Don't say that too curb loud. Stomp? No, no, I just wouldn't say that I'll too loud. Bash that little doll. That's bad. What do you think the scariest movie? Ever Dude, is. It has just, nothing to do with ghosts. What do you think it is? Let me just tell you this. If, the, if that, if that, like to play if, games, hold on, right? I will. If that little Chucky doll, I'll boot it. If he came in with a knife, if he, I'll if he shows thing. up in your bed, I'll put that thing in downtown, the middle of the night. Chinatown. Terror train. Chinatown. You ever see Terror Train? No, Andy. You're not. You're not really working with me with this, are you? <laughs> you didn't do. You didn't watch shit. What do you think the scariest movie I'll is? I'll tell you. Hang on. Uh, it has nothing to do with ghosts. Mm-hmm. What do you think it is? The scariest movie scariest ever. Scariest movie ever. Well, give me a, give me a hint. Ocean. Like, ocean. Well, it's not Ocean's Eleven. No. Okay. Um, the Ocean. Okay. What do you think? Oh, that, Jaws. Jaws. Thank yeah, you, Brody. Jaws. Fuck is he dumb sometimes. Jaws is the number one <laughs> scariest movie well, ever. It hits you in a different kind of way. Uh, uh-huh. And they talk about the USS Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. You know what that is? Yeah, it's a ship. That... Mm-hmm. That went down when they naval dropped, ship. No, actually. they dropped off the bomb in mm-hmm. Friday Five. Yeah, that's when old boy was talking about that when yeah. he was really wasted and he was talking to uh, when he's on the on, on the boat and they're like they're checking their scars out and he's like, hey, look at this. And they're like, what's that from? And he goes, I was on the USS Indianapolis. Oh yeah. And what that is, mm-hmm. that was the ship that dropped yeah. off the bomb. Yes, it was. And they came back and it was no one knew they were there because no, it was they secret. Didn't. They didn't. And know. also, in a fucking, I think a Ger- Japanese fucking bomber, maybe a German, whatever it was, bombed wow. that thing. Nine hundred went in. Uh-huh. I think three hundred came out. Get out! They of here. all got eaten by sharks. Uh. Most horrific thing ever. Check that out, that documentary, USS Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. There's been some other scary ones, yeah. but Jaws is up there. Jaws was Jaws a little is a number, If you look it up, Jaws would be like, this. no, but Jaws, like, literally scared people. They wouldn't want to swim in the ocean mm-hmm. after that. Mm-hmm. And that was a low-budget film. Mm-hmm. Richard Dreyfuss and all that, dude, that was a low-budget film. I would film. still say the Chucky doll is way scarier than, uh, than uh, I mean, the Chucky doll just beat, really just scares, scares me. You know? <laughs> you're a type B person. What is that? Oh, B? I just think that you just don't. Like, you don't look at the creativity. Be as in brave? I don't know. You're just a type B <laughs> no, the, the creativity. It's a creativity part. Like, you just don't think. Mm-hmm. Cre- that's all good. Yeah. You're good with hockey, man. I like Jaws, though, man. Jaws the scariest is scary. Yeah. yeah. Well, realistic. maybe. I mean, listen, I'll put that on the list. Okay. I've got some other scary ones that have been uh, very oh, scary. I'll give you another one. Oh, Lordy B. Mm. All y'all out there. Watch American Werewolf in London. Yeah. Oh. What about God. American Psycho? Yeah, I mean, that's fucking... American Psycho. I mean, that's just... A, yeah, it's kind of goofy more than anything. It's a good movie. But American Werewolf in London was the first movie, werewolf movie, mm-hmm. to where the werewolf, you could see the transformation, legit transformation in, mm-hmm. the, in the werewolf. Meaning, the werewolves before this, this is like 1980. Are you talking about Teen Wolf? Because Teen Wolf, see he turned I, into Brody, a wolf. Brody, can you grab the mic so I could talk to somebody about Halloween crazy, ca- scary stuff? Like, can I have... No, because conver- real conversation. Because you know somebody? Michael J. Fox, dude, he oh, turned into a, yeah, he, he would watch he, that. He turned into a wolf. So anyway, at the free throw um, line, I think. the American Werewolf in London is horrific. It was the first time that they showed the actual transformation of a werewolf. Horrifying movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's scary. Ty can't do it. No, Chloe, hell no. Laurie? Ivy, oh gee. Hell no. Oh, Ivy, I'll be Ivy could not. Oh, I, God. Ivy would be no, up no, all no, night. No. Ivy would be up all night. I saw how cute they looked the other night. Long. Did There's you? no way. And their Halloween could, stuff? They look so cute. All of them. But. Ty's a shark, by the way. I saw that. They Ivy is cool. a cheerleader. Yeah, she's going to be a cheerleader. She wanted to wear black lipstick. I'm like, no, you don't need to be like I the know. No, I know. like the scary like, cheerleader. Like, Just be like, like the, the pretty happy cheerleader. Yeah, happy, so you're happy, not trying happy, to be like, like a guy. Because her friend. Another one with that, but Her still. friend who's also dressing. She has yeah. two friends that are both. Aww. They're all dressing the same. Yeah. And uh, as the same cheerleader. And they wanted. The other girls were like. Getting a little gothy. On well, you. it's Halloween. It's Halloween. I'm like, Halloween. Be I'm like no, no, Don't no, no, no. Don't be type B. No. Don't be well, type B, Andy. I'm, Let them be yeah. creative. I don't know what type That's that not, is, but I... I it's, a, it's a nerdy type. Okay, but I never, I never uh, could understand the whole goth thing. We had I a lot wear of all go- black we had a every of, day now. I'm gothic. But you don't paint your nails or anything like that. No, I didn't do that. And that's the guys when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, I love heavy metal. But when I was in high see, school, see, I associate you with those type of people. I mean, that's that's what I because you because because of, of the heavy metal that you Andy, listen I, to. I was, you know, an athlete. Oh. You know, remember? Oh, yeah. pro. Remember? Remember that? So <laughs> Wait, anyway, hey, what would you play? But everybody. Rob Blake says to me today. Uh, he said, uh, he goes, "How's Cam?" 
What's Cam like? <laughs> Why would he say that? In a weird way? No, no, no. I go, exactly like you here. That's Cam. Was he mad at me or something? No, he's we great. didn't talk about He's like him. the nicest person ever. Robbie Blake? Ro- didn't we have him on? No, not yet. Oh, well, fuck. I'm like, when you coming on with that? Oh, I, oh geez, I've I had we had him on. I him. have harassed his ass. Get him on. Oh, he's going to come on. But like now it's during, listen, Cam, during the season. I know. I, I'm not, I don't like to bother. No, I don't but want I'll, to. But I'll tell you this, man. And I don't want to like dive right into hockey. So finish your well, time. Like, well, I don't know what I'm, uh, you just, you interrupt me and I don't know what I was talking Tight. about. Oh, the gothic people. Yeah. Here's the deal. Yeah. I love heavy metal. But when I was in high school, I wanted to be the athlete. But the gothic guys that love Slipknot, mm-hmm. I didn't like Slipknot because I, it associated me with the guys that just hang up. And with, nobody and likes And I'm like, them. what the fuck? But then you listen to the band, and I'm like, God, they're badass. But it did asso- cer- certainly associate you with, like, the the guys that kind of hung out by themselves. They didn't do any dance. They weren't mm-hmm. like, they just were loners. They didn't really get the girls. They weren't athletic they were well, necessarily Slipknot handsome, in the, uh, but they're all Slipknot, and I'm like, I don't like that band because I, I associate them with it. Mm-hmm. But then you listen to the band, I'm like, fuck, are they bad? Was ass. Slipknot in the documentary of what? Of the uh, the remake of like the 1969, um, you know, what I'm talking about New York, dude, Woodstock. The fuck are you talking about? The Woodstock documentary that yeah, they what did, about it? the the one Slipknot? from like 1996. Or did they perform? No, there? they weren't there yet. They 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 came there was in 99. A couple bands that were a little. They came in know, 99. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, 94 Woodstock, and there was a 99 94. Woodstock, but I don't think 99. Slipknot, yeah. No, Corn was in. There 99. was a 69 Woodstock, just so you know. Yeah, I know. Okay, okay. I want to watch that make, documentary too, Jake. You know. Okay, no Corn. That's exactly who I'm thinking of. Corn's awesome. That's not Slipknot. Awesome. Yeah, they're oh, bad they're ass. awesome, dude. Yeah, I yeah, saw. They're, they're I awesome. saw them last year live. They're so damn good. Oh, you still Jonathan see Davis, them? What's up, baby? Badass. Oh, they know you? No. Well, you just said hello to them, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, his yeah. name. Well, what's Peterson. up, baby? To him. He's, he's awesome. To corn. You like candy corn? Is that like a fuck? No. <laughs> hey, all y'all out there with the candy thing, can I? Can I get? If you have candy corn mm-hmm. or fucking raisins or apples, I know. Or or fucking. Those like cheap taffy things that are like pink oh, that, and brown. That you can't even get the wrapper. Can't off get the wrapper them. off. They stick to cheap as oh, fuck. I've no, 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 no. The orange and black ones. Orange and black. Like I've cheap, never eaten one of those. Or like so, you're cheap. Don't be cheap. You know here's what? I'm, no, 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 I'm not done. And here's another thing: if you have a neighborhood where there's a shit ton of kids, and you turn your fucking lights off and just watch TV and don't put candy out for them, mm-hmm. even though one person might take the whole, who gives a fuck? Mm-hmm. You keep that out there. If you ignore it, like, that's just so, like, smack yourself they, in the face. Get prob- with it. They probably put... Hang with the kids. Let probably, them be happy. They probably put cigarettes out there those where, kids where, where been, you live. Those ki- and, and, like, a lighter. Just no, take one hey, cigarette, and by kids. the way, if you, guys, uh, one. if you guys go through your candy and you find any, you know, narcotics... Send it my way. I'll deal with it. We'll deal with Whoa, it that Cam, way. I'm just that's saying. a serious topic, dude. Well, is it really? I got kids. I know you do, Andy. I know you do. Do you know that these kids... Send in, it my in way. A, in a Virginia middle school the other day, Yeah, they were handing out gummies, dude, and they were THC gummies. Yeah, I know. And well, kids are like, like, they're like going into convulsions and stuff. Yeah, but don't do that. Yeah. Don't hand don't out... Don't do what? Don't hand out gummies. Well, no, weed. but there's psychopaths that do. And they you hand, think the weed... They listen, hand out Andy, those little colored little, uh, the little fentanyl think, deals. Yeah, no one's listen. No one's doing that. I mean, there's some, maybe maybe one point zero 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 percent somebody might do something, but no one's handing out their weed gummies. People that smoke weed don't do that shit. No, but now the fentanyl people might be nuts. I don't know fentanyl, yeah, but, but fentanyl they're not handing okay, that time out. out. What are but you talking about? It's not about? about like the soccer mom who drives the minivan and be like, "Hi kids, give me a joke," and she's gonna hand them like a gummy, dude. No, what are you talking about? You may have have a high school kid who tries to fuck with a little kid. Oh, that could be true. And give them I a gummy. You. you know no, what I'm saying? 100%. Like the idiot, the idiot, you know, who loiters in front of 7-Eleven, yeah, whatever. Yeah, skate, the skateboarder, <laughs> quotation marks. That guy? I skateboard. No, you loiter. Okay. That's what you or do. the uh, the loser in middle school okay, who wants to well, give some kids some. But that's, so that's, I get so you. it's not but like, you're talking about it's like, not like Mrs. Johnson who's baking cookies all well, day long don't who's get handing can- that well, out okay, of her door. How about don't get candy from a kid that's your fucking age? Why are you trick or treating? Oh, I with, talked to Chloe about, about that this morning. Did was you Chloe l- like, oh, hi, hi, sir. You're two years older than me, and you're handing me candy. Do you know that I'm my, my that. mom, when I was a kid, she never once checked my Halloween candy. Yeah, near mine. Because what they said back when I was a kid, um, and I, I had some great costumes, Cam. I was a uh, California raisin one year. I was a yeah, mummy is. one year. I was Sick like though. a uh, a hobo one year. Excuse me? A hobo, like oh, a no. homeless guy type thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, I was a uh, badass. I think I was a football player one year. Oh, I bet you were for mm-hmm. Halloween. Yeah. Football player. Yeah, football what player. About a hockey player. I was a hockey player one oh, year, I too. Bet. Ty wanted to be a hockey player this year. I'm like, eh, no, let's change it up. Just wait you're like a, a year. You are a hockey two. player. Yeah. You need to be it for Halloween no, like your daddy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Um, I was a, uh, I'm trying to think what else I was. Uh, I had a number of uh, great cool costumes. So yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but but listen, so but when I was a kid, though, you know what the, the, the crazies would do? They put razor blades in the candy. Jesus, Andy. No, Hold on, they would. And then you well, it never happened to me, but they would say make sure you check the candy and make sure there's no razor blades in there. Okay. Okay. Scare people. You don't no remember hearing that? that? No one's no one's look, man. Yeah, I, I know, but don't eat the razor blade then, dude. You know. <laughs> if you got a razor blade, just like throw it out. Mm-hmm. Hey, you wanna or know who my good. new favorite, yeah. the coolest dressing room in the league is? Arizona. Coolest team. Arizona. No, they're they're, they're, I, I they're goddamn no, embarrassing. I feel bad for Arizona. I the play, it's, it's not the players' fault. It's not their fault. Did I say you that? Think Matt Cassie and Clayton Keller like Do you think did like I say being that? chirped? Although I wish they were a little okay. more honest. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. Oh, it is. First of all, it was quiet. What did you game pack too? In Embarrassing. Well, the fans, they were like, oh, it's going to be like this young college crowd. Five bucks. Five bucks. I didn't see it. any college kids there. They're all like, no, we got shit to do tonight. No, we'll go to the other game. You know, we'll go to the ASU game. I know. Where it costs less. We'll go to the you other game. You see the concession stand? We'll go to the volleyball You see game. the concession stand? Andy. I'm, you see the team store? It's fucking embarrassing. Like, how long is this going to go on for? This is sick of visiting locker room, too. So badass. I want to have the chair in the middle mm-hmm. with my equipment. That's when you know you're the worst player on a team. When you got the middle chair. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> trust me. Especially in that no, shit. No, but I think that room. was... Um, what a joke. I don't know. I I love Clayton so much. He's the cutest, sweetest kid in the world. I don't love blame... It's not anybody... I like Cass, too, It's man. not anybody all. affiliated. I know. It's fucking embarrassing. With the team, it's not their fault. I know. It's not the GM's fault. It's not the coach's fault. It's not I, the player's fault. No. no. It might be fucking no, Bedman's no, fault. No, the owner and the executives, I don't know. Yeah, I don't they, know. they gotta figure this shit like, out. Like Bedman, like, is this is this No Bedman's probably like, okay. What this are we is, doing here yeah. though? Did you no, see the, there's no other city you see in the, United the, States? the menu for the concession stand. It, what it, was, it, it was like candy listen, corn. <laughs> it was like going to like a <laughs> cheap taffy. It was like going to like a a circus at Dixie like cup, at like Dixie the, cups full of water at like the the fifth nicest venue in the city you live Andy, in. It's, a joke. it's like a little like a and they just had you know chicken strips, pizza, cheese, or pepperoni. It's like a Washington Fair or something and a hot dog. Yeah, a cheap hot dog. A Washington Fair probably even be <laughs> way nicer. more. I know. What am I talking about? Um, the coolest team though, man. Who do we say used to be the coolest team? Uh, Vegas was cool for a while. Uh-huh. Chicago was certainly cool for a while. Then we had... Oh, uh, Washington. Washington was fucking badass. They still are. But, like, you know who's really cool? Let me guess. Let me guess. Okay. The coolest team. Um, I would say... Well, Colorado's pretty damn cool. No, they kind of think they're cool. Well, they just want to cuff Andy, so uh, they probably should think that way. I know, um, I know, but... Uh, you know, I don't know where you're going with this, to be honest with you, so go ahead. Montreal. Okay. They got a bunch of young kids. That Cole Jay- Caulfield lit us up. You know what I mean? Cole Caulfield. That like, you're going to put him down? Can you, like, hit him? No. How about not throw pizzas up the fucking... They got that him? guy, Jack Eye. Yeah, Wi-Fi. He's and then up. they got... Um, Weidman. <laughs> well, they got Weidman, who apparently he talks like crazy in the locker room. That's right. But Joel well, Levinson, yeah. Monahan, all these dudes, man. I'm telling you, their coach is cool. Yeah. As shit. No shit their is. GM's cool. Yeah. The president's cool. Yep. Like, I was talking to Joel a lot. Uh, I talked to him a little bit before the game. I talked to him after the game. I talked to Wides after the game. Jake Allen. Like, they're just Jakey a boy. they're just a cool-ass yeah, team, I man. You, and they're playing with house money. They've got four young Defenseman, this this young guy Gooley, defenseman who played uh, junior hockey a little bit with Jake Neighbors, yeah, like he looks like he's been in the league for like ten years, dude. Like they, they they've got something going Scored there in Montreal. And then you know the kid who was the uh, uh, the uh, first overall pick, and I'm forgetting how to pronounce his name. It's like uh, oh, uh, your eye. Yeah, um, yeah, he's a big. They kid. have Jack Eye and your eye. No, the the big the big Czech kid. Yeah, he had that one tee off the. But he kind of flips out every time he scores. Have you noticed that? His well, first goal, excited. he starts like screaming at the entire Coyote team. So what? Uh, he's big. What he's are you gonna a, do to him? He is. He's you eighteen. Try to hit he's him? like two hundred and forty pounds. Two thirty, dude. He's a big boy. So then, I guess the coaches weren't putting him out there on the power play. So he scores a power play goal against St. Louis, and he starts screaming at the coaches. 
Oh, well, that's not cool. Like, look, staring yeah, him down. Settle down. He needs to yeah. settle down All just right. well, a tiny bit. Okay. But, listen, they were here in St. Louis, uh, the Montreal Canadiens, for like, they just left today. They've been here since Thursday. So, I mean, yeah, Thursday or something. Yeah, so they played. What did they do? I don't know. Well, the rain kind of. W- were they walking around downtown St. Louis like, wow, let's stay here next night? No, night. but the, the rain washed out their golf plans. They were going to play at Old Warson Country Club, I understood. But I think they watch football all day long at OB Clark's, you know, like on Sunday. Um, so I like those Montreal Canadiens. I, I get you on that, you know homie. I like wides, man. They got a combination. I don't Mark know how Joel's good they are. Jakey boy. I don't know. How, I don't know how good they are. Yank. But you know, doesn't matter. They're playing with house money, and uh, I don't think they expect it to be good. I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs. Who knows, Where? man? This seems like kind of like a weird year, though. I mean, you got teams that expect it to be good, compete, that are kind of struggling. Yeah. Everyone's calling for, uh, you know, New Jersey's head coach to get fired. Then now oh, they're like well. six and three. I mean, it just like everyone's got to chill out. That's all I'm saying. It's a long year. How old do the kids need to be to trick or treat by themselves? Oh, I would say ten or eleven. Okay. Without you even like you just go in a group. Yeah. That's yeah. About if they're right. in a group. Like for example, I'll give you an example. My daughter, she's in sixth grade, so I think sixth grade is like a good yeah. age for that. She has a phone now, especially. They're not going. They're not going trick or treating by themselves. You're in a good neighborhood. Yeah, but they're not going trick or treating by themselves. And if they have, you know, any issue, maybe they can call you, or you can keep in touch with well, them. Well, like if your kid's going trick or treating by himself, then mm-hmm. he shouldn't go trick or treating. Like that's just the weirdest thing. Have you ever seen a kid when you're sitting out in your your front porch mm-hmm. come up by himself? Like I don't, I don't know. Well, the parents like stay on the on no, the no, street. Like, you a, mean? like a kid that should be alone. Like they're like four years but old, even just if out your kids trick or treating by themselves. No, that doesn't happen. No, 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 no. I'm saying like a 13 year old kid that's just trick or treating by himself, or oh yeah, he's trick or treating with his parents. Well, that would suck though. Mm-hmm. No, I see. So you're just hanging with your parents? I don't that's, know. I know. I, that's not. I mean, to each their own. I I wouldn't do that. I don't. I wouldn't be that protective over my kids to feel like I need to go with my kids who are 13. But there are some kids, Cam, no, some parents who grew up in different environments. Maybe the kids don't have a whole lot of friends or whatever. Yeah, and, I know. And they feel like, you know, listen, there's a lot of parents that are so overprotective. It's just kind of what we're talking about. The media kind of scares you into all these different things, yeah. right? And I think a lot of it is true, but you can't just live in fear. You're, about the, like the, you're right, Andy, 100%. Your entire right. life. And you got to let your kids be kids. My daughter, for example, and I, I, I see how it goes because she's going to a Halloween party tonight. Good. And it's like sixth, seventh, and eighth graders because the person who's hosting the party has a sixth grader and an eighth grader. So you're going to have like various yeah. grades there and, and whatever. And, you know, some of her friends' parents aren't letting them go to the party. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't have, listen, I trust my no, kids, you're man. Cool, and you're pretty cool, Dad. And, you know, I grew up with, I will say this, man. I grew up with uh, being able to kind of do what I want. I know, me too. And I found the kids. Of uh, parents who were overly protective, mm-hmm. who were rebel. so crazy they that their parents, that, that those kids became like crazy. They rebel. You're right. It's like seen it all of a sudden, you can't do what you want until like you're 18 years old. I know. They're like, fuck you. And they're and like, they hate you. They like unleash. Like, why would you want to do like that they, to your kids? They unchain. Like, like they, you have to be by me. Like, your kids are going to be like, I hate you. <laughs> like, you're watching me trick or treat when I'm 13, 14 years old. And I'm trying to talk to girls, mm-hmm. and my dad's behind me, like, well, what, what? Yeah. Like, that's the most, they're going to hate you. Mm-hmm. Why would you do that? You're the nice thing. Dude, I know guys. Mm-hmm. I know guys we all work with. Mm. And they talk about it. And yeah. you're like, whoa. Like, your kid's going to rebel from that. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Mm-hmm. But, like, if I'm that age, the last thing you want is your parents around you at hey, any point in your life. You have to let go. You have to. Andy. You have to put yourself in the shoes of the kids I too, know, and dude, realize. What? I tell my 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 uh, wife this all the time because it's it's interesting. Like my oldest kid is eleven, and she's getting to that age, you know. And she's on the phone a lot. She's talking to her friends. She's doing her thing. And I, I could see how, like, moms and daughters are always kind of going at it with each other. And I'm just like, you know, sometimes, listen, it's you just got to gotta take a step back. Because you don't, you don't want to have that type of relationship with your daughter. No, they're going to rebel against you. Well, yeah, you just want to, like, you know, just trust be, them. Yeah. Know when to intervene. Know when it's time. But If your kids are trustworthy so far. Mm-hmm. Like, my parents, they let me go because it's just a different. We lived way out in the woods. And I wasn't trustworthy. 
you're doing all kinds of shit, but it just happened that way. But if your kids are trustworthy, they get good grades, like they're good kids, mm -hmm. and you're still like, I don't know. Well, they're going to be like, fuck you. Then you know what? I'm not going to be good. It's a different so environment, though, man, altogether. I'm just telling you, yeah. like, if, like, if I'm a kid... And my parents, I'm doing everything right. Like, what else do you want me to do? And you still not let See, everybody else is doing it. You know what? I'm going to rebel against I you never now. had a curfew You're in my life. Ever. Besides hockey. <laughs> I used to get curfew tickets. I remember one time I got pulled over on my bike. I was like 14 years old. I was uh, riding my bike home. It and he's such a rebel. It, no, I think, I think if you remember, if you were out past, past like 11 o'clock during the weekdays maybe, or like midnight on a week, weekend. I, I didn't live in a subdivision. They would give you... If a police officer pulled you over, oh, they, so yeah, that's right. They would give you curfew tickets. Yeah, in subdivisions. Yeah, you're right. So one time I'm on my bike, he literally like turned the lights on, like pulled me over. I was like riding my bike home from my friend's house. I was playing like Tecmo like Bowl or something, you know, like with my friends, and like you know, this lived a couple streets over. I'm just riding my bike home. Would you say it to him? Oh yeah. And so he's he like cool. He followed me to my house. Okay, that's fine. Then he was then, probably worried about you. That's all good. Gave me a curfew ticket. Oh, you probably were a and smart knocked ass. on. No, I was. I was scared to death. Okay, of police. but like he should have done that. No, That's, and gave was the he curfew a ticket. Guy, no, and gave the curfew ticket to my mom. I got like three or four of those. Oh, you're so, you're crazy. Like, oh my god, Isn't he crazy, Brody. What, Cam, what a crazy Cam, life he lived. We'd hey? get if you were under seven. If you were under seventeen, you'd get them. So I'd get pulled over like with a friend who was driving, like in high school, like going home. Yeah, you get pulled over. They would give you a curfew ticket. I know what it is, Andy. I got arrested. At and 16. you had to pay a fine. I literally, literally got arrested. With handcuffed? Handcuffed and everything. Really? Yeah, dude. What'd you do? I'll tell you what I did. Me, Jordy Fox. Mm -hmm. oh, I remember. I think died. you told this story. Sister just died. When? This was when I was, I was 16. Jordy was 16. I was with two other of my buddies. I had, we had, I had weed and chew and booze. And my Mustang 5.0 I had all of them in there. And we're cruising. We're like, let's go meet these girls at this little cake eater. My must ninety one Mustang five. Yeah. What year was it? Ninety one. Yeah. Oh, two thousand. Yeah. It's still nice. No, two thousand. Yeah, it's still nice. No, yeah. it wasn't. It was six grand. Dude, I had a seventy two Mustang. Let with, me tell with, a story. With, no one, no one with cares. bullet holes in it. No one cares. And it was rusted out. Okay. <sighs> I gotta see a picture of that. But my dad got me a little yeah. fucking shitty Mustang yeah. five zero ninety one hatchback. We're cruising. We, I got things on. We're just like cruising around Eureka. I went to a stupid sort of pool to meet girls. Cop rolls up. Poor Jordy, man. And I love him so much. And, you know, he coaches. His sister died. He starts crying. Oh, man. Oh, and, and like losing it. And I'm like, oh, God. And we, we found all this stuff. And we get arrested. And I was with the mayor's son, the mayor of Eureka's son. Matt Berry, mm -hmm. Mayor Berry at the time. I had a friend named Matt Berry as well. And was he was he an old, artist? No, he was a. This kid was like rebellious against his parents because his dad was just like that. Probably, his dad was yeah. strict as fuck, and so we rebelled. Although I was just like doing whatever, and so we get arrested. We all go to the courthouse that, that handcuffed us at sixteen. Oh my god! And they take us all in and behind all, your back. No, it was in front. They put it in front. Oh, you like, 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 an, my, like an old lady. I had my St. Louis Sting jacket on. Mm, Junior yeah. A Sting. They must have been like, oh, you're you're. No, that, you're an athlete, yeah, though. Yeah, no, okay. yeah. Andy, you could be a dipshit. Like, yeah. I'm an athlete. Like, I remember, like, showing him, like, hey, I play mm -hmm. hockey. He's like, oh, yeah. really? The cop was awesome. Mm -hmm. He's still on the force today in Eureka. We go into City Hall. They put us in there. They call our parents. Matt Berry's dad, the mayor, comes in, pissed off. Everybody's parents. My dad's like, all right, get him the fuck out. Like, come here, Cam. Takes me and Jordy, takes us back. Mm -hmm. He gives us, uh, so it's not on my record, it's an MIPT, minor in, in possession of tobacco. Of tobacco? Yep. He didn't do the weed, mm -hmm. he didn't do the booze. Mm -hmm. Just gave me an MIPT. You, ever have, a, you ever have a fake ID? God, yeah. Jeremy Johnson. There used to be a place you can go to, and uh, you could get fake IDs. You just pick out your state, and you just change your name. You just, you like yeah. write down, you fill out the application however you want. It was easy. With a name and an address. You just make up a name and an address, and they would literally give it to you. So like I a got, state issue ID. I, know, I had one, dude. Mine I was get, from Vermont. Actually. I got one from my uh, trainer, Jeremy Johnson. I'm going to give you a little shout out, which is not good, but he gave me his ID, and I went to Walmart in Eureka one time with my buddies, and mm -hmm. I bought beer. And I They get, probably don't even card you in those, they in carded those, those areas. I, looked, I was 16 years old. I looked young as shit, mm -hmm. but I got through. I put it in my mom's new car, little Cougar. She had like a Cougar car. And I remember put a 30-pack in the back, and I'm driving back with my buddies, and they roll me over, pull me over, 
and they take the beer and let me go. Mm. I drive back to my parents' house. We all go in the basement. We hear a knock on the door. Ding, ding, ding. Cop comes, drops the beer back off. Mr. Dan, here you go. Really? I swear to God. Wow, that was the cool. weirdest. Yeah, one why? time I had the fake ID taken away, but they didn't realize that they, g- they gave us two. So, you know, they took one away, but you still had one. Yeah. Um, I've never been arrested, but technically I guess I kind of was because. It's not good. Uh, it's not we like were in braggadocious the, shit. No, it's like, not. We're, we're lucky we got away. Like, no, you know, no, we, no, no, no. It's not no. good. That could have fucked me in I was in the back of a uh, pickup truck, and my buddy's dad, like, oh, like worked in, like, a uh, sales, but he, like, had, like, sold, like, paper goods, like, paper towels and shit like that. And the other people that were in the back of the pickup truck. We used to drive around in the back of a pickup back in the day. They were, like, throwing yeah. shit out of the back of the truck. And this one car was, like, following us and whatever. So, anyway, the cop ended up showing up at the house later on that night. And all of us had to, like, take ourselves to the police department. And so, you're uh, on our own. What, I guess. Why would I don't you know. do that? And they gave us a peace disturbance. And at least, like, I had to do 25 uh, hours of uh, community service. Yeah. So, I worked at the wrestling meets. Under the athletic director, <laughs> let me come work concession stand at the uh, restaurant. And he lied about the hours, too. I think I worked like two That's hours, cool. and he wrote 25 hours on there. So. Look, this yeah. is about, like, here's a point with this whole thing. It's not like, oh, I got... It's like, here's the deal. All y'all out there with kids, like, if you know when your kids are good, and you know when they have a weird thing going on, and you got to balance that. Like, I was, like, in between with that. You know, I had a good hockey thing going, but I was pretty crazy. And my dad and mom had a balance. Not very good hands, but you had... Whatever, it's working out. Yeah, you're forechecking. But it was working out. But my parents, like, they were kind of like, fuck, is he going to be... Like, what do we... You know, like, I was, bam, bam, bam. Like, is he going to be okay? Like, he's doing this. But it all worked out. But my point is, like, you can't shelter your kids, but you also can't let them just fucking run loose, especially Mm -hmm. if they don't have a vision. Like, at least we both... Andy, you had a vision, dude. You did. Whether it was hockey, now you want to be a fucking reporter. Like, you might have got jammed up here and there being getting in trouble, but you had a goddamn vision, and you knew what you wanted to do, and you fucking did it, dude. And you were sitting here right now fucking kicking. Look at the fucking clothes you got on right now. It's all free shit. We're all driving free. Come on. Like, we're doing pretty good. My point is to all y'all out there, man, like, you, you got to balance that. And I always tell you that. You got good kids, man. So if fucking Chloe wants to go to a party, if I'm you, and not that I have, I, I get that, but I'd be like, yeah, let no, her you try gotta, it. You gotta find let the balance. Just fix, like, and, let her figure it out. And every kid is different, man. I know. You just every gotta, kid's different. Yes. Every parent's different. Every yeah. everything's different. Yeah. But yeah. when we say this kind of shit, it's just like you just gotta like sit back and remember like how crazy. Mm-hmm. It but if was you're if you're too overprotective, and if you're overprotective in it's a way that that it embarrass, embarrasses your kids, it, it, it may it, that could that could ruin the relationship you have with that kid. I like. I'm forever, so glad you brought dude, that up. Forever. Thank you. If you fucking embarrass your kids, man, in front of like their buddies, their girlfriends and stuff mm-hmm. like they're gonna fucking hate you yeah like my dad i told all i said this before like he chirped me in front of the guys because we, we'd be like i'd be like okay dad i fucking get it yeah but if i was around a girl mm-hmm. oh and, and i was like oh god i'd look at him I, I did something he just would never say anything better and i just i would respect the fuck out of that yeah. even as a young kid realizing like he didn't do it that time mm-hmm. if it was my buddy travis or you or whatever at the time he and i'd be like who cares but that girl i was with he never did that, and I loved him for that. Mm-hmm. And my mom. Just remember that. Yeah. When Ty's fucking doing shit, maybe chirp in front of his buddies, but if he's a girl over, like, I'd, I'd hate you. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. It's hard to bounce back from that. Hey, a couple other things I want to get into. Number one, uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets do. Yeah, they're doing good. They are really struggling, and this right. one is really hard for me. Can I just say it's very difficult? I know. We like all those Because guys. we like all those guys. Yeah, I know. You know, J.D.'s there as the president, and he's going to have to make some real tough decisions here, man. I know Brad I know. Larson's the head coach, but, you know, Yarmo Kekalainen, you know, one of my favorite people I've ever gotten to know in hockey, yeah. man. I mean, I was, I was very, very tight with him yeah. when he was here in St. Louis, yeah. working as the head of amateur Smart scouting. Man. I always joke around that I got him the job. You know, I pumped his tires more he than anybody, dude. Pumped the shit out of his tires. Same with Bill Armstrong, uh, who's now the GM in uh, – in Arizona, man, but but those guys were so important in terms of the the success the Blues ultimately ended up having. But you know, I I just wonder what the fallout is going to be here. I mean, you signed Johnny Goudreau, um, you know, the organization as a whole. It's always been kind of goofy. You know, the first twelve years, I think they went to the playoffs like once, and then and since superstars since too. Yarmo got there, you know, they've been going to the playoffs, but they haven't had a whole lot of success. Now they're on to another coach. They had that Torts era. Where things were kind of good at times, other times it was just a little bit of a distraction. 
Um, so now you got Johnny Goudreau, man. And so the expectations automatically, you can't just sit there and say, well, we're still several years away because the expectations, when you bring in a high price free agent, superstar, the expectations just change whether you like it or not. I don't think the fan base can just sit there and be like, yeah, we're still several years al- uh, away. Well, you know, you brought in Johnny Goudreau. So they think, hey, you want us to come spend tickets to come watch Johnny Goudreau. That's all good to watch Johnny hockey, but you want to spend tickets and watch the team win. You're not going to go know. spend money to go watch the team lose. So, listen, I, I almost feel like if the team wasn't going to Finland, which puts it, you know, it's a little difficult now. I mean, all of a sudden now you have, you know, Patrick Laine going back to his hometown team, our hometown, to play some games in the NHL in his home city. And you got Jarmo Kekalainen, the first European general manager in the history of the NHL, going back to his home country. Yeah. So you can't make any changes now. I know. You had the terrible incident oh God. with the goaltender, and you just wonder where. And then, not to mention Elvis Merzlinkins. Merzlinkins. His wife is coming out what and saying stuff. That? I, don't I don't know, know. but but you just wonder where his head is at. I know. Um, with Elvis, Poor kid. you know, mentally, yeah. man. I mean, I, I can't. You can't expect hand. anybody to just get over that right away. Can we t- explain what we're talking about so people don't... Well, they had the firework incident yes, at, Ma- at Manny Legacy's house. Yes, I know. And w- I think most people realize and understand that, you know, Elvis was there. It was his best yeah, friend. They're in a hot tub. And, so yeah, the other uh, goaltender, I mean, it's very tragic, dude. Oh, and he God. passed away. Oh, God. And he- he'll never get over that. Oh, God. And so I know he stepped away from the team yeah. earlier this season. I know they said he was ill, and, and you know, I don't know the exact... I know. You know, situation, but you just wonder if he's going through it mentally. You got the wife coming out with her stuff on social was media. That Columbus's fans, or was that was she out of town? I don't know, man. I don't I know what she's it. talking I about. Hate that. I, like, I, I don't know why fans would ever go after somebody's you, wife. What, you said you want to kill the kid. What, what the fuck? I don't know, man. God, Andy, crazy I, stuff. It, but sometimes it's like, did they say that? I don't know. You know, yeah, dinger. Like remember? who's who's saying? Who the it? fuck says that? Just like mm-hmm. uh, Twitter's like the N bomb. Hey, Wait, what? Who's saying I would, that? I would tell my. <laughs> what? It's like it's like the the NHL when they meet with the players before the season. Yeah. They tell the players, man, hey, don't put your kids and family on social media and stuff like that. It's up to you if you want to do it. No shit. But I would keep that account private. I know all the players and the wives because the wives are living in that environment and their husband okay. is an NHL to. player, so they want the attention. So they want the fifty thousand followers on Instagram too, right? Andy, I know. But you know what? Maybe it's okay to have two thousand like, followers and keep your shit. Is it about you? Keep it private. Is it about so you? then the crazies can't get to you. No shit. So I don't know what the fallout's going to be in uh, in Columbus, but it's not good. They're losing to bad teams. They lose at home to Arizona. You know, they get blasted by New Jersey, lose 7-1. to one, So it's only getting worse. But, you know, J.D. was brought back there as the president, and, and you know, he's known Yarmo for a long time. I just wonder what that fallout is it gonna is going to be. Is it just going to be the coach? Is it going to be more than the coach? But let me just say, if they don't turn this thing around and turn it around very, very quickly, uh, you know, major changes are going to be made. And that's just the reality of the business. But you did get a superstar. And to the fan base, you're still like, thank you for that. Like, Mm -hmm. you still got, like, Johnny's still fucking. What do you think Johnny's thinking? Well, he's probably thinking what he was thinking when he signed that. Like, I'm going to get paid. It might be a struggle. Like, well, you think he's going to go there and be like, bro, we're going to fucking dominate. Like, no. Maybe. Maybe. Well, then you're dumb. Maybe he's like, ah, they got. Wierenski, I'm going to play with Lion okay. We're going to tear it up. Well, where were you at? I'm that good. We're going to elevate the team. Well, then, hey, have a, um, you know, a, a sense of, uh, you know, like uh, reality. You're at Columbus. I only. never see the point of paying a player that much money unless you know that player is going to take you over the top. Well, sometimes when you're a market like that, Andy, I get you want to have a superstar. I get it. Actually, I appreciate that. Sure. Don't overpay for one. Did he mm-hmm. overpay for – he had 100 – how many points? 15, like, it's yeah. like, how old is he, 28? 29, whatever, 29, 28, okay, whatever I'll, he is. I'll yeah. pay you. Yeah. Like, we need something. Mm-hmm. You know, we need people to be like, hey, Columbus, look at Johnny, toe drag. Right, and he went right. end to end. We saw some highlights the other day. Well, that that's healthy. You mm-hmm. had Ricky fucking Nash, boy, yeah. when he came in the league. Yeah. I remember talking to fucking David Ling and guys where Linger would be, like, looking at shit or something, and Nash would be like, ain't nobody looking at you. Mm-hmm. The cameras are on me, and they were. Nasher was a legit superstar, and we had him on the podcast, by the way. And you know what? Like, that was a that was a big deal for him. Now they're like, "Fuck, what are we doing?" We're like, uh, "Well, right. yeah, we beat uh, Tampa." When, right. but now we're like, "No, let's go get somebody mm-hmm. and build around it." Mm-hmm. Right now, it's not working. But I appreciate mm-hmm. what they did. Yeah. that's all, baby. Yeah. I don't. And we see, love the guys. There. I don't. I don't see JD's patience being. 
that yeah. strong. He's going to be patient. He's been at this for a while now. But at the same time, I I, I just wonder how long those pa- you. how you know how much patience I do you have? You. I hear you. When you're losing like that at home, it's like you know. Arizona Arizona's supposed to be that homecoming game on the uh, on the schedule. You know how like the football teams schedule like the terrible team for homecoming? So it's like an automatic win. Everyone automatically assumes you're supposed to beat Arizona, right? And and you are. Yeah, but you know what? Arizona, they beat Toronto. Uh, oh god. They gave they gave uh, the New York Rangers the I run love, for their money, although they got outshot very, very badly. Yeah. But you know, you lose at home to Arizona, man. Those are the type of losses. That will get you in trouble if you're a head coach or even a general manager or what. So we'll see how that plays out, man. I wouldn't want to be JD right now in that situation only because, man, it's. I don't think they expected to be in this type of position this soon, this early in the year. Um, But we'll we'll see what happens, man. It's something to to pay close attention to, Cam. Yeah, I know. You know, there's drama out the wazoo in this goddamn league, Mm. in every league. I like Columbus. I like the people working there, man. But they're Columbus. Yeah, like, they're, yeah. You know, like Johnny, like, what the, we're going to be sh- No, what, what? No, you're going to Columbus. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like, you're going to have to work. My son's hockey team this year, he plays for the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's his team. What? His team is the Blue Jackets. He plays they for li- the... He lives in Columbus? No, his team is the Blue Jackets. Why? That's his team. Because Why? They, they have NHL theme. Uh, oh, that's cool. And so man. his team is the Blue Jackets. Well, that kind of sucks. So... You know, you just want to see Was the Blue like, Jackets have can success. Can I be the, uh, you know. No, but I'll like say this, but because JD's, JD's grandson's on the on the team, Aww, that's which is cute, cool. Then. Oh, that's cool. JD, I didn't know that. JD gave every every kid on the team Columbus Blue Jackets autographed oh. jo- Johnny Goudreau hats. Oh, I love him. Oh, yeah. So my, kids, St. so my kid's rocking like a Columbus Blue Jackets that's hat cool, with then. Johnny Goudreau's that's autograph different. on it. But that's yeah. different. When I he know. goes to school, yeah. it's not a Blues hat. Yeah. It's not a Cardinals. Yeah. No. It's not a Battle Hall. No. no, you're different. Like, yeah. what's up? No, I'm representing, yeah. you know, like I like So you that. know how they say, you know, if you've been around, you know, the NHL or the game playing whatever it is for a long time, you don't really root for teams. You root for people. I do root for people I in Columbus, that, whether it's Basil McRae, J.D., yeah. Yarmo Kekalainen, man. I mean, these are I people that I root for Jersey, I, too, because that's my with. fan base, baby. Yeah. I love all y'all out there, man. Yeah. So, but J.D. is the president, man. He, I know how he is. He fucking hates losing. Fuck yeah, dude. And he hates getting embarrassed. He doesn't like being and, boring. And he won't put up with that No. You better long. do something. Yeah. You better put on a show, yeah. then. He if you're not going to win games. Yeah, exactly. So the so you can only, like we did. your patience can only go so far as we know. Um, the Toronto Maple Leafs, man, we continue to talk about them. You know, and they 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 just keep losing. You know, and it's like I know I, I feel like Sheldon Keefe has lost that locker room. Cam, I really believe he's I, lost I, the I room. I love Adam Keefe. I have fought him, and I love I yeah, love. That well, family. this is Sheldon. I know. But he, Adam listens, and I just okay. want to say I like. I feel like maybe he's lost the room. Because we're like putting a. You know, like we talked to Barry Trotz. I know, I know. Well, oh my God. I know. Did that blow up? Sorry about that. Well, he says it's intriguing for him to coach a uh, an, well, an original you asked six a question, team. Andy. Yeah, you asked a question. Yeah, you asked a question. Yeah, so and that's what he said. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, it is what it is. So he if answered. If you're winning games, it. no one cares. And I asked him, does, do, do you want to work in Canada? Would you ever want to coach in Canada? He said, Well, I would like to coach an original six team. I know. There's only two original six teams in Canada. Marty oh, really? St. Louis. Which ones? Oh, Marty, no, Marty St. Louis. Oh, Bruce Boudreaux. Bruce, there it is. Barbecue Bruce. <laughs> we lo- no, I don't want to try. Barbecue I love, Bruce. No, I know. We I love know. him because he came up. Dude, and I'm, I'm glad he won his 600th game. It took him a little while, but congratulations on doing it. Now, now you got to do it in the playoffs at some point, though, Bruce, to yeah, truly create that. a legacy for himself as a as a real elite head coach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's been he's been a real good head coach for a long time. He's coached some great teams, had a lot of regular season success. Now you want to see him do it in the playoffs eventually. But let me get back to Toronto okay, though. Okay, go ahead. What, 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 what was your question? Of all the coaches we've had on, mm-hmm. Barry Trotz has got to be the most down to earth oh, son yeah. of a bitch oh, you'll yeah. ever fucking talk to in your life. Yeah, he's cool as shit. Jesus. He's cool, man. Like, he was nice. But he's but like, chilling right now. He's like, but I, I know. He's making money. He's getting paid. I, 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 I he's know. living in Nashville. He's got no pressure, no I, stress right now. No, he does have stress. Well, family, like family stress. That, family stress. Trust me. That's stress. I know that. He was cool as shit, Andy. Mm-hmm. In every way possible. I just mean, ho- I mean like hockey. I mean us. hockey stress. I know. But, like, people, people are like, that guy's a cool. Why wouldn't they get him on? Like, like you don't realize how cool that guy is? He said everything. He was, he he was like, you talk to him at, at, he, uh, at he a bar. He doesn't do a lot of these right now. And speaking of uh, 
Toronto, though. I, I, listen, I know I said I feel like he's lost the room and stuff like that, but here's why, Cam. And I've talked to some very smart hockey people about this, is that when you call out the star players and then you backtrack, which we've talked about. We've talked about that, yeah. So it's not about the star players, and you can maybe speak to this. So it's not about the guys making 10, 11, 12 million bucks a year, but it's the other guys that are your bottom six guys that aren't making a lot of money. They're the ones that are being like, what? Now you're going to, you're going to, oh, you're going to point the finger at us. You're not going to hold those guys accountable. Well, what's you're going to, you're going to call out the top guys. And then you're going to backtrack. Like if I'm a young guy or not even a young guy, but I'm a depth forward talking to some former players, man. This is their perspective. I think this is the perspective that a lot of people who watch hockey, fans, media, would never even think about. This this is a opinion that I think you maybe have to have had been in the locker room to understand. And people who played a long time in this league are like, I'm telling you, man, when you do that, and if you're a guy that's trying to get in the lineup and you're not getting in the lineup, he's not playing you. And I think he like took Michael Bunting off the line for a practice or something like that. And then he ended up putting them back on there with Marner and uh, and Matthews. And they took like, Marner off. Like, and he, he like have a. He's like, well, that's from? that's the change you're gonna make, you know. And it's like these guys who can't even get in the lineup. So when you see them call out the veteran guys and then you backtrack, I, I don't know, man. Maybe that good. creates it ain't, it ain't good. that that creates so some when you issues. Call out, yeah. So this is my experience when you call out the big boys and look. So big, that's where they're like, hey, that's when you lose okay, the room. I, I know. You know? I get, no, Andy, because it's not all about the veteran guy. It's not all about the highest paid players or the best players. So Cam, as you know, I know. Yeah. No, I get it. So and, it, and when you affect one side of the locker room, like it affects everything. So like the point is, like you call those guys out. Everybody's like, damn, okay, what's up? Like mm-hmm. calling a big. And, and you back, and, and backtrack, and the guy's like, "Wait, what?" And the depth guys appreciate them finally getting called out because you're I, always calling my ass I out. Know, it's you're easy taking to do me that. out of the lineup. I'm in. I'm out. It's always my They're fault. They're making twelve and a half. Oh, good. Call so their like, ass out. Maybe I could be a better player if yeah. you didn't have so much money that you're paying these guys. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, it all balances. Oh, but up. now it's not their fault again. No, now, okay. now they're like, "Oh, wait, I just thought you, did you just call him out? Right. Now it's on us. Oh, right. okay. Right. I played three minutes last night. Like, what the fuck do I? Have to, I got to puck out every time. Mm-hmm. So, like, what's going on here? That's weird, and then I don't know, man. No, he did. He has probably lost the locker room. But if well, I did was, you see him here, talking on here, the bench? Let, let Hold on, Marner has a couple turnovers in the it. game on Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. Or Saturday? Whatever doesn't matter. And he goes in the thing, and, he and he's goes. talking on the bench. Yeah, and he goes in there. Look at the body language, and look at like look at William Nylander. He's just looking around in the stands. I'm Willie. He's not even paying attention. I want to work at Tim Hortons again. He's uh, like, he's probably calling Chris Wyman to try to go to the blow dry bar, so, you know, to get yeah. his hair blown out. Does my hair look okay? So here's the deal. So when you're uh, the rest of the team, instead of the, the you know, the, uh, the Mount Rushmore, and you call those guys out and you backtrack, the, 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 ba- the right thing to do when you call out your superstars, honestly, and when I've seen this firsthand, is like, put a fucking fourth line guy up there. Put a third line guy up yeah. there and put him down in a third line. Not a fourth line, right. but the third line. Yeah. Mix it up like that way. Like, no. We're going to play two practices this way where we got a guy that's been busting his ass. He blocks shots. He's going to go up there. He's going to play with the big boys who are not as bad as the other guy. And you kind of mix that around. Now they're like, what the fuck is it? No, no. And everybody's like, oh, God damn. Okay, maybe I'm going to step up. And now, now it's a competition. Mm-hmm. Now you're going out there like, let's go, let's go. Now he's pissed and he's pissed. But if you do that and you backtrack and you put the same lines back up, everybody else sitting out, now it's about us. Now you got the guys maybe going, but you don't have anybody else going. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a weird mindset to have. And then he didn't want to reveal the lines, which is fine, whatever. But he dresses 23 players out for warm-ups and all this type of stuff. And it's just 23. (laughs) I know. I know. So you don't normally see that many Uh, in warm-ups. Hey, don't be confusing, dude. So figure it out. This is a lot of guys. That's got to kind of suck. Maybe you like it as a player. You like taking warm-up when you know you're not going to play? Fuck. Fucking no. (laughs) Okay. Why the fuck would I want that? I know. You get the rink two hour, two and a half hours early. You sit there. You wait. You wait. Like no, mm-hmm. no. You want to play, but you don't want to just take warm ups like an asshole. I'm it's listening. nice to be like in the mix on what they talk about, but then you're fucking not. No mm-hmm. one looks at you. You're not playing. like you see the pregame shit, but you don't know what the inside locker room is before the first, yeah. the second and shit. You're not in the mix. You're the bitch boy, and yeah. I've been there plenty of times. All right, a couple things. Uh, on the scary Halloween edition, 
with Zach Ronaldo, who yeah, uh, yeah, he's a cool cat, man. He's a like, cool dude too. He opens up about a lot of court. shit here on this. Court, yeah. This, I mean, listen, he answered the questions head on. He did a lot of suspension questions. I wish he would have got. Well, his what, next, like, his kind of career. Ask me about, when you think of Zach Ronaldo, what are you thinking of? Of course, Andy. No, his I mean, overtime winner. I mean, like you're thinking no. of. What do you think of me? The same yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. It's the same shit. When I think of you, I'm thinking of like. Uh, Back and we. Uh, <laughs> no, take, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. What? Um, nice, cute. No. What? No, I think of like you know whatever some fights whatever. late late Thanks, hits Andy. late what hits. What do we think of you? Fumbling That's the, the fumbling the puck. Late hits. If I was swimming the puck that much, I wouldn't be in the lineup. Mm. Ever. <laughs> I mean, That's true. I still just got it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you fumble it, but if I fumble one time, I'm done. Yeah, I know. So I didn't fumble that much yeah. like you do in the one night Yeah, I know. What would say, somebody say about your, you think, like, let me think of Andy. What do I think of Andy's career? <laughs> His he career. Sne- he sneaks on the alumni skates and then tries me on my team and my line and s- tries to start the game with me. Mm-mm. And I got to yell at him to get off the ice. And he doesn't wear shoulder pads. And falls into the boards and makes a connect mm. sh- like, a, like a shit show out of it. I gotta give Eric Carlson a shout out though. No, he cut out. his hair. Yeah, he's very good three on three. He's scoring some overtime goals. He's leading all defensemen in scoring. Yeah, in the NHL nice right now to get going. Too. So, I like his hair longer. Just so like he Chris still Simon. can't defend. You know, just so you know, like let's not confuse that. He's not a good defender no. right now. Oh, he skates a puck. You, you watch. But, well, he just jumps. You know, sometimes Cam a lot of. Th- Times you get these superstar players who career their career kind of falls off, and they just kind of take a beating. He makes a lot of money, but you also talk to people and they're like, "Dude, he hasn't been healthy. He's dealt with a lot of fucking injuries. These guys have been banged up, and so well, maybe he's whatever. feeling good now. Make maybe eleven five. Don't be well, banged up. Well, maybe he's getting healthy. You know, what yeah, I'm that's saying? fine. But on the other hand, it's like I don't like to like chirp the fans for chirping guys. No, but I'm just saying. I'm just so you sometimes know. an athlete. I, I There's know. nothing they can really do because everybody when knows you're not that. Healthy. Well, they don't be in the lineup. The point is, you're making a shit ton of money. Mm-hmm. You haven't won anything. You get beat up by the Blues. Then you're fucking out of it. Mm-hmm. And you're making so much money to where it affects the rest of the team. Yeah. And then you're not that good. Like yeah. the fans are going to get you. That fucking California, they're paying yeah. a shit ton of money to come watch you play. Yeah. I, I got to stick up for the fans on that. Now he's playing well. Yeah. Pump his tires A couple up. things I want to get to real okay. quick. Stuart Skinner, yeah, he's playing better than <laughs> Campbell. Yeah, no shit he is. So he should keep How playing. How about him against the Blues the other day? Good Campbell's God. average. He's he's good, but like not it's great. Whatever. So, listen, I've always said this, and I'll say it again. Goaltending, the most difficult position to predict in hockey. And all these sure. guys, you get to this level, all these guys are capable of stealing a job, winning a game, having a great week. Can they do it over a long period of time? That's the big question. Can they do it? I don't know. So we'll see. You know, I mean, Campbell finally starting to make some some real money. Uh, you, it, 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 things change. All of a sudden, you go to a different team, new environment, where you're supposed to be the guy, not just a complimentary piece, where in Toronto, yeah, you're under the microscope, but so are all these other guys. Now you go to a new team that just got to the conference final. They're thinking you're going to take them over the top. It's just a different type of pressure. I hear you. Different type of pressure. Uh, DJ Smith, man, yeah, they're pointing the finger at him in Ottawa. I, I, listen, I hope not. I, Brady, I, I'd like Brady's to see, doing good. Yeah, Brady's doing real well. He's leaving that line together. Uh, but they're dealing with some significant injuries, including one to Josh Norris. He's got that shoulder injury. They're missing a D-man, too, on the back end. So they've got some real, real injuries back there or, uh, on that roster. And I'm not one of those guys that even though they brought in Claude Giroux and uh, they made the trade for Debrinkat, Cat, uh, that I really thought that they were just going to all of a sudden take this next step. and be, I thought they'd be better, and I do think they're better. But do I think they're that good or that or ready to be a player? No, probably not. Yeah, probably not. Okay, so so we'll see how that goes. I don't know. I mean, listen, these coaches, man, that you bring on board to develop, and all of a sudden they struggle and they lose all these years. Kill them! Burn them at they, the stake! They never really get that yeah. chance to no, when the know. team is finally good to be the guy. It's hard to hang on in the NHL, is, man. man. And I like TJ. He came yeah. on with us. He's a cool cat, tough yeah. dude. Winter, yeah. motherfucker. What's yeah. up, baby? Give mm-hmm. me a little shout out. I know yeah. you're doing some, uh, going through some hard times. You'll yeah. be all right, homie. Yeah, well, that was nice of you to say. I'm trying to be nice, man. Like, you know, like. I, I like I, DJ. I His players like him, I too. Ch- I'm chirpy chirp all the time. Mm-hmm. I get that, dudes. You guys can yeah. chirp me, too. I, I got problems, man. I'm f- hey, one other thing I'll get to. Yeah. Not going to get to everything on Brody's list here, but he's got some good stuff here for sure. Brody. Um, uh, Jake DeBrusque. Yeah. yeah, he is, and I like his dad, Louis. his daddy on. And we'll get him on. Yeah. I just saw Louis last week. Big Louis. Um, <laughs> Jake and uh, 
Bruce Cassidy did not get along. Mm -hmm. Remember he was asking for trades and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah. And sometimes a coach can stay too long. You have these issues. And I'm telling you right now, if Cassidy is still there, and Cassidy's doing a hell of a job in Vegas, so don't mistake this to think that I don't think he can coach. I think he's a hell of a coach. But sometimes you stick around too long with one group. It just – the expiration date just comes. And yeah. you you got to go a different way. The players don't want you there. You've kind of done everything you can do with that particular group. I mean, you got players in Boston who left and went to Europe. And then, you know, Cassidy leaves. Yeah, no shit. And they come back. That was, that was you know, odd. one of the most legendary players in the history of that franchise, Patrice Bergeron. He was going to retire. I don't think he comes back if Cassidy is there. I know. So then he comes back because Monty's there. Monty's a breath of fresh air. You got Brad Marchand, you know, putting pies in the face of Nick Foligno in practice and stuff. I don't like that. I'm just saying. Don't hit me with a pie. My face will you break out with that. acne. Yeah, I know, I know, I'll get I know. Pissed at that. But, you know, they're just having fun, man. And winning is fun. I get you, But homie. Jake DeBrusque, man, you give him a little bit of confidence – and he feels good about his game, and he's got a coach that's playing him and using him and probably communicating with him, more importantly, the way that he needs to be communicated with. And all Monty of a sudden, you're going to you're gonna get those results. Yeah. So big shout-out to Monty. Them, Everybody love you, Monty, in Boston. Dude. What's up, baby? Yeah. McAvoy's not even back yet, right? I like McAvoy, too, man. He they get him back yet, Brody? McAvoy? I don't think so. No. No. So they got Marshan back. Um, so anyway, we'll see how that goes. All right. Zach Ronaldo on this edition of the Cam Strict Podcast like brought to you by uh, Hair Club. Cam, as you know, yeah, Hair man. Club is for so. men and women. It's for everybody. And uh, you can go on our landing page, hairclub.com slash Cam and Strict. Do that and do that today. And uh, restore, regrow, and replace that hair that has just left you. Oh. Just abandoned you. Fucking bald spot. But you know what? You can get it back if you go about it the right way with Hair Club oh, and HairClub.com. And go to that I was landing page. going to be a, a guy with a cul-de-sac for Halloween. Yeah. So. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Yeah. No, it's easy to do. Yeah, I know. You can take the hat off. You can be it. Andy. <laughs> hey, HairClub.com slash Cam and Strick. Go there. Uh, sign up for your first consultation on, on the website. You're going to save a bunch of money, okay? And we got a lot of people, by the way, that are signing up and buying stuff on our first form platform. So oh, I appreciate yeah. people who are doing that. Please, thank you very much. You know, firstform.com yeah. slash Cam and Strick. Keep doing that. I mean, the options are endless. First form is a way of life, Cam. It is, man. It's a better way of life is what it is. I got that uh, back end beef stick right in front of me right, mm -hmm. right are now. Are you salivating at the I'm moment? hungry shit. So 1 o'clock. What do people eat on Halloween? Chili? Yeah, chili. Yeah, I think they eat chili, yeah. Yeah, Andy, yeah. that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> there might be beef in that, so you probably won't eat it. My in-law is like, it'll be Halloween, and they'll bring over like, is it vegan? Generally? Cookie cakes and stuff. I'm like, they don't need more sugar. And I don't know who you cookies. hang out with, but like, can you bring something cool. healthy today? No, get, I hate seeing my kids eat all that candy, dude. It's just too much. It's dude. fine. Jesus Christ, you're okay. You're okay. They're gonna be okay. Settle down. But if they do want to do force farm, like they're not the beef sticks. Like all well, they eat the uh, pancakes. The kids do. Oh, the cake cups. Cake cups. Yeah. Yeah, they easy, have pancakes, easy. they have uh, blueberry, uh, chocolate chip pancakes, blueberry yeah. muffin. It is a way of life, though, man. Like, if you go in there and, like, you're part of that group, like, you're working out, you're yes. doing, you're disciplined. Like, it's yes, just, you are. Every, you know, they write out a letter to you when you buy their stuff. Handwritten, they do and that for, like, they do that I, for me. And you're like, I like you. <laughs> you're like, you really like, they're like, oh, I like you. They're like, great choice on the cherry lime like energy drink. I'm though. like, oh, my God. Like, okay. Somebody's doing their job today. They're doing it, man. No, I love it. I love everything about him. I drink Especially those Nick. Those energy drinks, man, because here's the deal. Yeah, you can drink coffee. You, I, I, I'm always drinking coffee. Oh, God. I know. But now I just pound one of those during the day instead of drinking another. Sip on that mug, dude. Coffee. It's easy. And you'll, you don't have the hiccups either. Nice. What is your deal with the hiccups today? Uh, dude, I don't get mix, that shit. Because, man. Andy, when you mix Is there something else easy. you're taking that's making you do Maybe. that? I mean, I mean, what else, what I else is in your I think when you mix diet? together shit, I'm very particular about getting the hiccups. Mm -hmm. We're on the radio a lot. We're doing podcasts. Yeah. I can't get the fucking hiccups. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I drink a goddamn monster or something, I'll yeah. get the goddamn hiccups. Okay. This, I don't. And I'm like, rawr, rawr. Like, I'm going to do push-ups. I'm going to do things. What's Nick I'm going to make a to? phone call. It's probably working out. Probably. Combing his hair. His hair doesn't move. Oh, you think it gets that cut, or just stays By the same length? Somebody very professional, I think. <laughs> what Actually, are they? hey, they better he's use got such good hair. He could do it himself. They better be use like gold plated scissors I on know. that. It's like, hey, just like, be very, be very that. careful with that. Be careful with. Could our you Nikki. imagine if that uh, person who's cutting that hair, the Screws stress and the pressure oh, they're under? Like, oh, I can't screw this. Oh Jesus, <laughs> too perfect. Help me. <laughs> 
Nick. They'd be, you, they'd be cursed. They're all cool over there, man. But the vitamins, man. Uh, my yeah. brother in uh, Utah just turned him on to the uh, vitamins. I, I said, hey, you got to hook up the uh, vitamins and get those uh, multivitamins and stuff. Damn right. They got it all. They got it all, dude. Protein to everything. For your kids, for the your fruits, wife. The fruits, the veggies. You want to be healthy. The apparel. You wanna, you're starting to work out. Yeah. You don't want to... You want to feel good with pre-workout mix? Mm-hmm. Like, they have it What all. happens if you take a lot of the proteins and you're not working out? Like, can well, you tell me what... <laughs> oh, is that what happens? I do. Really? Yeah. What does it do to you? It makes me want to, like, go to Kate and smell her hair and then be like, Oh, oh my so God. Is that what blood. you do? You... <laughs> s- <laughs> yeah. I s- if I smell Kate's hair, it turns me on. Mm. Yeah, I've had that experience, too. S- if I s- yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Smell your wife's hair. Yeah. Like... Oh, get, mm. girl, get over here. Yeah. What's up? You called me the other day when I was having an intimate moment with my wife. It was you, Friday night. Why don't you just leave, leave the phone on? I did. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> leave the phone on. We were having a, uh, you know. Were we the were, kids chilling somewhere? They were sleeping. They fell asleep Good. so Put early on Friday night. Good Lord. Put I just down. left them on the couch down in the basement. I was like, or in the, I was like, just stay there for now. Stay there. I had the fire don't even, going. Don't move. I was like, don't even go near Jesus. them. Don't wake them up. Lock that goddamn, put music on. I put my damn first form hoodie on and my sweats. Oh, she liked that. Uh, Why didn't you put your uh, football jersey on? Well, I should have. (laughs) It's a crop top, you know. Yeah. Sexy looking. (laughs) Good job. You know what number uh, I was? I had two different numbers. Well, number one. No. Zero? I was uh, number, well, I was number 10 when I was a kid at football. And then I went from 46 to number 20. Roman Bullock? <laughs> Destiner? <laughs> Yoink. First form, baby. 46 is a goddamn horrible number. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. And that's all we ask. If you're going to order anything yeah. from First Form, you do it from that link. Please help with, the, with, with that. That just helps out everybody. Helps everybody out. Yeah. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick, Cam. Yeah, baby. What is it? What? Firstform.com slash camistrick. Yeah, dope. Thank you. I hope Call you're t- me out like are that. You you tell, gonna... Are you telling people this? Yes, dude. Just reposted it. Okay. Carshield and carshield.com. We go from one legendary institution to another. Yep. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Helping people help themselves, man. Isn't that what it comes down to? Of course. Helping simplify people your help life. them and simplify your life in the process. Carshield and carshield.com. Mention the promo code CAM, which is very embarrassing. I tell you that all the time. Listen, I w- but I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't for your own good because yeah. it's going to save you money. It's for your own good. So you never know when something's going to go down in your vehicle. So just be aware when something can go down. Nick Hamilton, big hockey fan. Oh, yeah. Steve, big hockey fan. Remember we were like walking through the halls and people were like body checking us. I know. I didn't like that. You didn't My like- shoulder hurt, man. <laughs> They're wearing like hockey jerseys. I know. I was kind of like uh, freaking people out because mm-hmm. I had a stick and I had, we were like filming us and I'm yeah. like tapping oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, uh, what? I'm on a phone call. I'm mm-hmm. like, sorry, dude. Sorry about that. You know, sorry. Sorry. What do you find uh, with 6U hockey, like the six year old kids? Like, I feel like whenever a kid gets the puck, everybody's like making them panic. The coaches are all freaking out. Yeah. Pass. No, Pass. Beat the puck. Pass it. It's like, what? Hold Just, on to it. I feel like once they get to a certain age, I mean, yeah, you want to pass the puck. But when you get to a certain age, the better players are going to figure that out on their own. They're going to know to pass the puck. Yeah, it's, right? it's part of it. Don't freak the kid out. Let them be comfortable with it the puck. It makes them panic. When you have panic mode, when you get we it. We want them just to hit it? it? No, just like take it and take know it that and take you're it and okay. Go. go. Yeah. I would just say go instead just, of pass. Go. That's what I said. Sometimes there's not a pass. And you moron parents sometimes are like, oh, pa- no, no one's open because your dipshit kid is still picking flowers in the fucking D zone. Mm-hmm. Settle your ass down. If the kid's got the puck, yell at your kid not to go get the puck. Like, why is he not getting the puck? Mm-hmm. Fuck, they're young. You want him to backhand sauce no look to you? Is that what you want? <laughs> Settle down. Tell your kid to be more aggressive so he can control the play. Yeah, that's a good and point. And go to the goddamn net. Yeah, that's a good and point. And shut yeah. up, yeah. too. I'm with you. All you. Yeah. You're lucky I don't have kids. Seriously. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't. I may with, need you just, just to come you, out. You, I might you need you just to start. I'm talking to all you saying, Can I send you the schedule? You're lucky I don't have kids. Not that my kid would be good or anything. No, I'm just like, I wouldn't put up with it. Any of can I send you the schedule? You're lucky I'm schedule. not coaching. Can I send you the schedule? Actually, you're probably not lucky I'm can I send, coach. Can you just come to the practice? Excuse me? Just come to the practice. Um, yeah, I, but I'm, you know, 
All right. With the fucking parents, like, I, I, I would be like, what the fuck did you say? Oh, y'all, you don't know shit. <laughs> the fuck out of here. Carshield oh, and carshield.com. They know yeah, they a do. lot of things. I including heard. how to simplify your life. So do it today. 800-857-2481. Write that number down. Put it in your phone. Uh, waggle Golf, man. They've got Halloween stuff out, too, man. Get, Halloweeny? Yeah, get your waggle on, Cam. I want some Halloween shit. I know. And now Christmas stuff. We'll say hi to Travis. And hi, tell Travis. What's up, homie? Anthony Stewart uh, tweeted out that, you know, it's amazing. You know, if he had top-of-the-line equipment, how good could he have That's been? That's what I was thinking. I, I I'm needed, thinking the same I damn know. thing. I had fucking stupid Cooper helmet on. I looked goofy when I was mm-hmm. a kid. I could have scored five more goals each. But each he w- year. But you know what? I don't know, man, because you were a first round pick. I will say that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You. So, so it kind of worked out for like, you. What is that? Oh, I got. So I got it kind of s- worked out. I got for stubbed. You. I got snubbed. Mm-hmm. Uh, weren't you a first round pick? Yeah. Wait, what? Hey, anybody who grew up underprivileged or in their view they were underprivileged or whatever, just make sure you're helping out other kids that are underprivileged. If you're in position to help out kids who are underprivileged, help them out. Yeah. There's always a chance. You know what I'm saying? It's not about the equipment. It's not about this. It's well, like, we all had shitty equipment. We all could make it. We all came from fucking weird fucking times. Some more better than others. I had no hockey experience. I'm the one that family. should be saying that. I had no, If no I had hockey. better equipment, could I have made it? My parents are <laughs> not very... They didn't have money. We were middle of nowhere. No one's ever made it. We figured out a way. No one told them anything. Yeah. No one played hockey. My whole family And ever. Chris Stewart, by the way, one of my favorite players we I've ever covered. All fucking awesome. Co- like, but the hockey. This was not Chris. Stupid. This was his brother. I mean, and I understand brother. what he's saying, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, well, I had shitty equipment. And we I all did, did. And I didn't make it. You had shitty equipment, but you, you did make it. So it all worked what out. Was he a, what pick was he in the OHL? First round. In the oh, U- OHL? I don't know. I first, first round, round NH. Too. First round NH. I think it was a first round OHL. Really? Like, so what do you? What happened? Yeah. What would have happened if you had top of the line? Would you, you, you like, went first overall? Would you have broken Gretzky's well, records? <laughs> you broken we Gretzky. love you, dude. You're a lefty. I what, love you, man. What a broken Gretzky's. I played against both of you guys. Gretzky's dude. record. I like both of you guys. You're cool as shit. Yeah. Gretzky was cool as shit. Oh, but yeah. we got to chirp you a little bit, man. It's all good. Yeah, baby. So uh, get your waggle on. Yeah. Uh, listen, golf is 12 months a year. I, I play all year round, guys. I play all no year round. Play with you, dude. Okay, so anybody wants to play with me, just hit no me one up. Does. No, they do. Why? Because I'm fun to, take I'm fun to golf with. Oh, they got to pay for it? No, I'll take them to your course. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, I know you See, that's will. that's the thing. Like, I'll take Andy. If he, you want some, I know, might be I know. Well, my JD, JD just joined your course, by the did. way. I know he did. Yeah. Andy. Yeah, so. That's where the cool cats are at. We're all going to play together one day. <laughs> okay. We should bring uh, Army out there, too, and Al. Okay. You'll really embarrass yourself, be, dude. No, I will not do that until I'm good enough. No, and you're not there yet. Not there yet. No, you're not. You know how I said that. Like, Peelzy, I want arm. Hashtag Peelzy said so. I can't chirp him anymore. No. I, I've chirped him enough. I'm done with it. I'm done chirping him until he does something stupid again. <laughs> can't do it. I've been fucking beaking him hard. I know. Well, now you stop. And I love him. You know I love him. Yeah. Get your waggle on. But don't on. fucking film me. Hey, Get your waggle on. Waggle Golf. Check it out. They got the best shit, man. Hoodies, hats, quarter zips. Badass. Perfect for fall golf season. And just to wear around the office or Badass. around the house or when you to work, whatever. Just represent us, man, and represent Waggle Golf yeah. at the same time. Uh, Bellman and Bellman.com. Yeah. Buick. Yeah, yeah. GMC, all in Troy, Missouri. And then they got the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. What do you think of that uh, Jeep Wagoneer came? I've been seeing those on the shit road. Shit kicking. Solemn bitch. It's the nicest. I've, dri- I've driven one. It's Have the you? nicest car I've ever yeah. driven in my life. Yeah. Nicest oh, really? Trip. It's unbelievable. Yeah. They are so nice. Andy. Danny boy, you hear that? Danny boy. Kyle. Kyle. Say hi to Kyle. Dale. Kenny. Hook him up. Say Kenny. To Kenny. God dang it, Kenny. It's not Kyle, by the way. You always say that. What is that, Kyle? It's Kenny. You said Kyle. Say hi to Kenny. What's up, Kenny? What up, baby? Say hi to Dale. God dang it, Dale. <laughs> Where's your brother, Dale? He's the best. He's cool, man. All of them cool shit. We love oh, them. They're our, they're our fucking OG sponsor, dude. They are. They're our OG what sponsor. What would you do for them if they needed anything? Well, tell them to call me, and they want me to come up there and do a fucking, be a cheerleader, I will. They want me to go there and, like, say hi to people. I'll do it. Whatever they want me to do. And try Missouri. Mm. Damn right. Hey, if you're looking for a pre-owned vehicle, Bellman has a great selection of all makes, models, and price ranges on sale during their fall used car clearance. Oh. 
Oh, my word. Over 110 used vehicles from affordable starter cars, high MPG economy cars, all the way to luxurious SUVs. Dude, the, I'm telling you that, try that fucking Grand Wagoneer. It's sick, goddamn mm. tough. Cam, I swear to God. instead of buying, are you looking to sell a car for cash? Fuck yeah. Bellman will buy it and then give you top dollar for it. Give me that money, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you want to hold on to your vehicle but want to make sure it's ready for winter driving. Trust Bellman's service departments for tires, maintenance, and repairs. Ain't no swinging dick. And don't worry about your credit. Oh, how nice is that? Bellman guarantees you get approved. Nice hey, Brody. Brody's probably get better. They guarantee. <laughs> Bellman.com. That's a two ends. Bellman.com. Um, programming note, Cam, November 12th, we're doing another uh, tasting and a meet and greet at the Schnooks Frontenac location. Oh, the Schnucks. Frontenac one. <laughs> uh, one to three. Come on out and say hi to That's Cam and I. That's where the wealthy folk are. One to three, Saturday, November 12th. We're going to have Is some fun. Is that the Cougar? You're gonna, you, you and Kate are coming over beforehand. Is it the Cougar song? Oh, yeah. All right. You and Kate I are, might come by myself. You and Kate. What? Oh, what? What do you mean? Well, what? Oh, well, usually no, Kate no, drives no. you. Kate's, no, Kate's coming. You guys come I'm over. I'm not to, allowed to go. No, anywhere. you're going to come over to the house beforehand. For what? Just we'll have a pre cocktail. All right. Uh, no, actually, I'll do that. Because, like, I'll be seltzer drunk by the time I get out of there. Oh, you, you look at a fucking <laughs> seltzer and he's wasted. Like, Jesus. Like, settle okay. down, dude. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, so check that out. Bellman.com. All right, and then, of course, uh, our friends over there uh, with, uh, well, I think, uh, Sparks, the skate sharpener. No, sharpener I use the skate. sharpener from Sparks. They're the best, S-P-A-R-X. Use that promo code CAM and Strick. It's going to save you money, more money than what you'll save on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Fuck both those days. Sparks, baby. I sharpen Ty Sky. I don't tell Ty when I sharpen his sky. I don't want to get him in a mental, like, frame. but then oh, I Jesus. watch. Like, ain't the next that, time he that, skates. Right. He can handle that. Well, I don't want him to say, oh, I skate. No, no, no. He can handle it. Yeah. And you could always, like, put it's it a, on the fucking it's a perfect, the plastic. No, it's a perfect sharpen, it dude. It's a perfect. Don't, like, don't, Every time it's perfect. Jesus Christ. Do I have to come 25 out? NHL dressing rooms are using the Sparks, and you should, too. Order your Sparks and do it now in time for the holidays. S-P-A-R-X. Listen, it'll change your life. It's a game changer. Have Simplify your own your skate life. sharpener at home. Why the hell you want to go to the hockey shop to do it? Uh, the, for the fourteen year old to fucking sharpen to fuck like, him up. Uh, I'm talking to my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, no. Cross grind. Sparks, baby. S P A R X. Sparks are flying. Sparks are flying. Use that promo code Cam and Strick. It's going to save you money. All right, let's get to Zach Ronaldo. The Halloween music is playing on the Cam yeah. and Strick Play podcast. Play some shit-kicking music, homies. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Ronaldo, we get into <laughs> everything with Zach with a C. <laughs> How do you spell Zach? Huh? How do you spell Zach? I don't know. Z-A-C, baby, on the Cam and Strick podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the Cam and Strick podcast is brought to you by Car Shield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on, and you know right off the bat you're going to have to spend Thousands oh. of dollars Ugh. to repair your vehicle. Call 800 857 2481. Mention the promo code CAM mm. or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. Yeah. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Cam. Sign up and get your coverage now Cam. with carshield.com. Cam. Now to the Cam. interview. Hello? Zach, your boy. Is this Z-A-C? What's happening? Z-A-C. Where's the H? Or is it just Z-A-C? <laughs> just the C, man. Just the C. No K, no H. Just the C. Short and sweet. That's what makes you different. Simplify, baby. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> um, A lot. A lot. I'm coaching minor hockey right now. I'm doing some uh, development with an agency. Um, Got two kids at home. I'm busy. Well, what do you mean, like, development cool. with the agency? Yeah. Like, what does that mean? Um, I joined, um, this group, uh, called Pinnacle and they deal with, uh, some minor hockey kids that are, um, good enough to have representation or the parents need some guidance. So I'm helping in helping in that situation. A couple of junior eight kids that need some guidance as well. They're trying to get to that next level, which kids, um, they dabble into some HL, but, um, I'm primarily focused on, um, uh, mentoring and developing, uh, young athletes that are, um, trying to get their goal, trying to reach their dreams, which is whatever the highest level that they can get to. And I'm, uh, I'm on board to help them out any way I can. Are they like nine years old? Like you know, all the, all these parents oh. are like, like nine, eight, nine year olds. Like yeah. we, we need an agent to help us get to the next level. Yeah. It's like, no, well, you yeah, don't. I've had, 
I've heard, I've had parents call me and these kids are, you know, between 10 to 13 years old. And uh, I'm going to give my honest opinion. And no, they, in my opinion, they don't need an agent, so to speak, at that age. You're not dealing with money and you're not dealing with um, anything that you shouldn't be other than focusing on being a kid, having fun, working hard and uh, enjoying life. But when you tie in, you know, all the agent bullshit that comes attached to the game, you kind of lose fun. So, no, some families, they don't know hockey, so they'll call, you know, companies like ours and, and have uh, mentors like myself help guide them to wherever they see fit for their family. Some people literally have never played hockey before, so they're lost. They have no idea. So that's where I'm helping out as well. Yeah, man, that's how I was. Like, middle of Missouri coming up, like, Scott Norton was, was with me for a long time at a young age, and it wasn't like – He's gonna make a ton of money. He's once no. It's more like here, here, here. Let me explain OHL to you. Like we didn't even right. know what the fuck that was. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're so when did you retire officially? I'm not officially retired, but um, obviously I'm not playing. So I was on contract all season last year with Columbus, and after my contract was done, um, I didn't reach out to anyone. I had really no interest on going back. So. Here I am now. It might officially be announced. I don't know when. I'm not a guy who's going to need to fucking, I don't need a big production announcing I'm retired. But, um, you know, yeah, it is what it is right now. I'm kind of up in limbo, so to speak. Well, you better make a decision because someone's going to call you after this interview, you okay? Know, no they're, shit, they're, man. They're going to call. <laughs> they want that. They're going to try to hire you. Like, oh, we'll sign them now. Or, uh, well, let's just make the announcement right here. I mean, make make yeah. it official right here on the Camus Rick Podcast. Yeah, I mean, officially hang it up. <laughs> well, you like how are uh, you? Yeah. I don't know, boys. It's like I, I'm i like on the edge. You know what I mean? I'm like, it hasn't really sunk in yet for me, to yeah. be honest with you. Oh, yeah. um, it's kind of still sinking in. And once it's finally, you know, sunken in, reality has hit me, then I'll, then I'll kind of get there. But right now, I'm just kind of... Um, you know, hasn't really, reality hasn't sunk in yet for me yet. So Cam, we're having a press right. conference right now. This is a press conference. It's going to get out. Like, how are you like, <laughs> oh, so, so you could take a couple years and kind of figure out what you want to do. Like, I had to get to work and right off the bat, man. Like, I, you know, like I just had to, I had to work. I had to make money. Like, are you kind of comfortable right now? And it's like, okay, I got my kids. Let me dip my fingers into this. Let me dip my toes into this and see what I want to do when I officially retire. But are you pretty good right now for a little bit? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. My hands are in a lot of things. Um, so I'm just kind of, like I said, I'm taking, I'm taking like the peak underneath the hood to see how the engine's running. Yeah. And if I like the way the engine's run, I'll hop in the car. You know what I mean? I get you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, you got to, and you know what in the hockey world, dude, you just, you, you don't realize how many people you know until you retire and you try to find yeah. a job and you want to do different things. But where are you living at exactly? I'm um, in Hamilton, Ontario, the Hammer, Steel yeah. Town. Yeah, yeah, the see, hammer, baby. And they, they listen. They know, they they know Zach with the C okay, over there. Yeah. They they all know Zach Ronaldo. <laughs> that that's where he's that's from. Exactly. So you can you can you can find your way around there. But like, hey, with these young kids though, are they? I mean, listen, because you made it. You, listen, you played in the NHL. You had a you had a, a career in the OHL. Like, do they look at you for like you know all this extracurricular you know bullshit with the suspensions and all that, mm-hmm. or do they or do they like recognize you for like making it and being an NHL player for almost four hundred games? You know what? I think um, it's a good combination of both. I think they've seen obviously the way the media has painted me in the past, but then they they meet me and they see a totally different person. And I'm coming from like I'm coming from a place of from my heart, and because that's how I played the game. I led with my heart. I played with my heart, and I made it through my hard work and and my efforts. So I think I'm installing good foundation for these kids. I'm not trying to preach, you know, go go out and bang bodies here and fight yeah. this guy. Um, I, I came up I came up with a really good foundation from my father. So I'm just kind of reestablishing good foundation with these kids, and it's um. It's going really well. I'm I'm connecting with all different types of walks of life through hockey, and I'm I'm connecting on a on a solid level. So yeah, they, and I and then you gotta get to know the kids, right? If if that one kid is he's got that grit and he wants that that push into the into the um, the non norm, the way I would go about things, then yeah, there's a couple of kids that you can push them and you can talk to them the way that 
they need to be spoken to, if they need to put a little bit of aggression in their game, or if they need to fight this guy, or they need to get it under guys' skin, then you can push those guys. But for the most part, man, they're seeing me in a totally different light, and I'm I'm loving it. How was your upbringing? Like, how was your what was your mom and dad do? Were they tough? How you brothers sisters? Yeah, my my dad, old school Italian guy, um, only knew hard work. So he was everything we did he pushed me to the limit and then he pushed me over my limit so like for the point where i you know break down crying i was working so hard but then kept going um so he just literally installed hard work and that was it that he just bred me to be a hard worker on and off the ice whatever i'm doing i'm working hard at it so that's just ingrained in me my mom was you know just a, a supporter <laughs> when my man pushed me too hard i go upstairs and fucking she'd come for me and go right back downstairs so i had a yin and yang at home that's good What'd they do? My dad worked for the city. My whole family works for the city. My dad sold bus tickets downtown Hamilton at the Go Center. So he sold bus tickets and train tickets downtown, 95. Um, my mom worked in the office in Mississauga. So they're just 9 to 5 employees on Blue the collar. grind, man. Blue collar, baby. Yep. Yep, I get you. <laughs> That's right. My, yeah, listen, my man. My family works for the city. Yeah, like us now. And there's something to be said for that, right? I mean, yeah, we, right. we talked to a lot of guys, man. You can tell which guys come, maybe have it uh, easy. Yeah. Some guys who have to really grind it to, to get to where they are. Hey, listen, in Columbus, you mentioned that, man. You didn't have your, your vaccine, or you weren't vaccinated, so they wouldn't let right. you go to training camp, so they sent you down. <laughs> like, did they tell right. you that in advance? Like, hey, if you don't get vaccinated, you can't come to camp. Were they cool about it behind the scenes, or were they pissed? Like, did they try to convince you to get um, vaccinated? Like, how'd that go down? They, uh... Well, I signed a contract, like in maybe July, and then I think it was maybe two weeks before training camp. Um, I think the vaccine stuff built up more hype through media and stuff like that, and then the more rules started coming out. So uh, they called. Uh, pretty sure they called my agent. I didn't talk to anybody from Columbus. They um, they called my agent and they said, "Well, he's got to be vaccinated to come to camp." I said, "No, thank you." They said, "Okay, well, you go down to the minors." Um, didn't want to do that because it was the same situation. And then, um, uh, yeah, just had to make a choice. It was either get vaccinated, go and play or stay home and not be vaccinated. And I chose to stay home. Okay. So did you, ever... I didn't talk to anyone. Right. I didn't talk to anybody. Um, no one, no one called me. PA never called me. Um, Columbus, no one talked to me directly. They all went through my agent, whether it was through text or whether it was through phone calls. I personally never was in direct contact with anybody wow so the so they never they never talked to you but they paid you like 300 grand which is what, what what i think was the guarantee in your contract right that you got that 300 grand correct me if i'm wrong but they, did they you have my hl salary yeah okay okay so did you ever were you ever like shit man i want to play i want to continue my career like like maybe i'll just break down and go ahead and do it or like what what was it about you that stuck to your guns on that um, well, this is not new. This the whole um, vaccine thing is not new for me. I've been aware of it, you know, been aware of you know how vaccines work and stuff like that for long periods of time. So I just chose to, you know, just uh, not um, not take the vaccine. And I mean, it was a pretty easy decision for me and my my health and my uh, my foundation, my morals are more important to me than the game of hockey. So I kind of stood on those and stood my ground and. You know, now look, where everything's kind of uh, kind of <laughs> dying down, so to speak, with uh, COVID and, and all those other things. So um, I think I came out on the right end. Oh, yeah, I can't okay. believe you're alive, to be honest. How did you survive? How did you survive? Yeah, well, yeah, so they, did, they didn't they didn't they didn't try to trade you, and you didn't. Weren't you guys like, hey, well, like trade me, or was this the policy for every team in the league? Remind me. No, I don't think so. No, I'm pretty sure it wasn't because I know. I know one guy, Bertuzzi, he was oh, yeah. not vaccinated as well. And yeah. team was Canada, team was cool with it. And he yeah. said, you can't go to Canada. And yeah. they were like, yeah, fuck, maybe we miss, I don't know how many games and how much money. Yeah, I would have been willing to do that as well. But that wasn't the case. But, yeah, I think every team um, made their own decision on how they wanted to handle that situation. Yeah. I think. They, they did it to – it was an assistant coach too, Cam, like uh, oh, sure. on Columbus right. who, who didn't get vaccinated. And he got, like, let go, right? Jesus. Yeah, he did. Lord. Yeah. But you know what? It's the, I don't know. I, I, I never know how to read into these decisions because, you know, like no one, Yarmo and JD and these guys, like these are cool they, guys. They, like, they, I, I don't, I don't know. They got to protect like, themselves. Yeah. It's just like a yeah. school board. If yeah. you're in charge of a school board, you got, you want, 
you want to err on the side of caution because you're in charge. I, I get that, but I get you too. How was it when you did say no? That no, I'm not going to get this. I know enough about. I know my body. I know my immune system. Mm-hmm. What, what was the reaction from everybody else? Like your teammates saying anything? Like, I think they might fucking chirp you. Besides, like you know, the media. I'm being. I'm going to be honest. No one called me. No one reached out. Um, so I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't know anybody's opinion. And when it comes to media and stuff, I don't even have cable at home, so I'm not watching media. I'm not going on Twitter and and seeing all that shit because I've been in that position before where i've been oh, yeah. suspended and they made me look like the bad guy and this criminal and i should be fucking suspended forever and, and shit like that so i've been in that situation it's not a cool situation it makes me feel like shit the times i have been in there because it's not the that's not the person i am so mm-hmm. um i've learned from my lessons i stay away from the media especially when i'm involved in the negative light not even i didn't read anything didn't see anything Good didn't hear you. anything I was totally disconnected. So. Did you, you, were you skating? Like thinking like that, that maybe like you, you would end up playing or did you just decide in the back of your mind, like I'm done, it's over? Yeah, that's where, I mean, the last, like honestly, my last, well, fuck man, you're on one year contracts for like five years in a row. Right. You never know what and if you're going to get a contract the next year. So every year I was prepared to, maybe this was my last year. This was my last go. Um, so I was mentally ready to a degree to not continue playing. And this kind of just forced me into that direction. I was thinking about mentally or preparing myself. So when it happened, I was like, okay, this is it. This is how it's going to go. All good. Let's just continue. So I was mentally prepared to a degree for it. You know, Zach, they suspended you so much that even when you didn't get suspended, the player safety put out videos. Like, like oh, I'd never seen a video that was put out for a hit that wasn't a suspension. Like, it didn't result in a suspension. They were like, they did the whole on video, he like hit player guys safety. A game. I know, but whole on video for player safety. He hit Sean uh, Couturier. <laughs> and they did a whole video for player safety. Like, <laughs> this is not elbowing. <laughs> This it's is not been. charging. He is Fuck. not being suspended. It was like, what? I've never seen this before. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah I do, man. I do. And it's, <laughs> yeah, trust me, my mind, my whole career, my mind was blown in so many different areas because I'm coming from, I'm coming from old school foundation. I'm coming from hard nose upbringing. I'm coming from, Contact started at fucking six years old, man. So oh, yeah. that's all I knew was I didn't like my opponents. I wanted to play hard on you every single time. And watching hockey growing up, those guys were grown men, hammering each other, grown men. And that's why where I wanted to play. I wanted to live in that grown man environment, battling with the, the grown men. Cam, like, fuck, buddy, you're, a, you're a, a man amongst men when I was playing against you. And I loved going to war against, men like yourself like that was challenging for me so when i you know would get suspended for things that got me to the nhl i mean obviously you know disregard maybe three or four hits that i got suspended for because borderline gray area i understand blah blah blah. but some of the things i was getting you know refs were telling me hey zach you don't gotta hit so hard or i had assistant coach telling me hey zach you know you don't gotta hit every single shift or maybe you miss a guy here and there I'm thinking to myself, where the hell am I, man? Like, this is not what I signed up for. So I had to adapt in certain situations just to continue and prolong my career. And unfortunately, I had to do that. But at the end of the day, um, the love of the game and my teammates and everything that comes with it, you have to roll the punches. But like I said, I'm coming from that hard-nosed foundation, man. And it was um, a different, <laughs> different NHL than what I expected. Yeah, dude, I get, I get you, man. Like, were you crushing guys in juniors? Like, hey, when you, once you, and like in AAA, like once you know and you get your timing, you get fucking hit puberty, and you're like, I'm strong on my skates. Like, when did you know I'm fun to fuck guys up? I was eight years old doing it. Like, how, Just, well, you could hit at eight, though? Actually, yeah, we could full blown really? hammer guys. Were they suspending you at yeah. eight years old? <laughs> yeah. Like, Zach, we all got you, can't, you can't come back we all did. next weekend. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, they were they were trying to tame me from my childhood. Like, my, I remember my dad would, you know, almost get in fights in the stands, and he'd have oh, yeah. arguments with the coaches because they were telling me not to hit anymore. And my dad was, well, it's part of the game, and they're not 
dirty hits. I'm not hitting anyone from behind because hitting from behind wasn't a thing growing up. I mean, because you just learned the way you're supposed to hit. No one hit from behind. But, yeah, I've been dealing with my whole life. So, I mean, I'm not new to this whole negative painting picture shit. So, I mean, I've been dealing with my whole life. But, yeah, it's it's been like that. Natural born, man. Natural God gifted talent. I was able to time. Mm. I was able to know where the hit was going to be. Like, goal scorers, good goal scorers can dictate where the puck's going to go. I can dictate where you're gonna be yep. before the puck yep. is there, so I can time and hammer you. Get you. Hey, but now that Get you're you. now yep. you're you're coaching though, and you're working with these younger players, like, do you encourage them to play physical, and like, do you, do you teach them how to how to you know hit, hit the right way. opposing players and hit the right way, or? Like, do you not, do you try to get them to not, to get away from that? Like, like how, how do you approach that part of the game? Well, it's tough these days, man, because now these kids are, there's no contact until they're 13. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. it's, you have to like, you, they have to unlearn so many bad habits first, and then you can apply how to be in good body position to even hit someone. Like there's zero timing, there's zero angling. I mean, and you can't do it. You can work on it so much during the year, but it's tough. You got to wait till the off season. But there's some guys where they just get it. And then if, if I see that, okay, this guy is physical, he's got a little bit of timing, he's got this down, and he's willing to go into the dirty areas, then I can work with them. But um, it's, it's challenging. I don't want to say it's hard. It's really challenging to have these kids' mindset flip from non-contact to contact. Like we've had guys, we had – Maybe we got three broken wrists on our team. These kids are 13. Three broken wrists, an AC separation. Um, so, and this all from just colliding with other players. Mm-hmm. And I've, it's just wild to see. And and uh, but yeah, it's, it's challenging, man. It, it is it's challenging. So to, what do you, what do you? Okay, you'll love Andy's little boy, by the way, Ty. He doesn't look like Andy, and he doesn't skate like Andy. It's very bizarre. We'll get into that maybe later. <laughs> but hey, when you're talking to these 13 year olds and their first their first time fucking hitting, are they like rocking guys from behind? Like, whoa, we don't know what to do. And also, like, what do you teach them? Do you teach them to protect themselves with reverse hits when they have the puck? Because no matter what, you stick a guy in their in their sternum when you have the puck on a reverse hit, which are god awful. You're not going to get a penalty. So, what are you exactly teaching these kids as far as hitting and all that stuff? Well, it's it's challenging. Like, man, it's, it's so hard because in this minor hockey, the, every ref is different. So every ref's going to call different things. With one game, you might get away with a reverse hit. And then the next game, you're going to get a five-minute conduct and a oh, game of conduct because right. you reverse hit him. It didn't look good. Maybe the kid got hurt and it was a big hit. So it's really challenging every single different game. Every, every game is different because you get different refs and there's different rules, basically. So... I don't, I'm not encouraging um, reverse hits yet. I think when they get a little older, then we'll, okay. you know, show the reverse hits. Some guys are naturally gifted with it. Then I kind of leave them alone, let them do their thing. But to teach the reverse hit or to teach even putting guys on your back and protecting the puck with your ass. Yeah. My group, yeah. my 13 year old guys, they're not there yet. But I think um, after this, after this year of contact, when they understand how, hard you have to brace yourself and how much work it is um, playing the game of hockey with contact, then, you know, I can add more things to it. But for right now, we're just, we're, I'm, I'm just so, I'm focusing on the guys who are willing to get into the dirty areas. And if you're not willing, that's cool. Then you better be scoring the most goals. You better <laughs> yeah. be buzzing around, right? You're back checking. The guys that are willing, the guys that are willing, I'm, I'm working with them and I'm just reiterating, hey, tuck your elbow. You got to brace yourself like your life depends on it because it does. Puck puck mentality first, but then you got to protect yourself at the same time. A lot of moving pieces go on. Yeah, yeah, man. Man. You guys know. Just show them the player safety well, video when you didn't get a suspension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like they put yeah. out. They put oh, out, yeah, they look it up all the time. They put, but they, put, they put out the videos. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Never, I've never seen that. Like I, They put out videos of guys who don't get suspended. Can I ask you this, though? Because you look at the the players who are, labor, are labeled as – predators over the years right the matt cooks of the world the raffi torres you know just based on the number of suspensions you had like people may put you in that category do you think you belong in that category like how were you different or were you were you similar um that's a great question man um i i would like to have a little bit of both like I wouldn't mind being able to agitate it because I love Torres. I love I love the way Cook played. I love the way Tucker played. Mm-hmm. I like the way Tutu played. Um, so yeah, you know what I mean. Maybe not agitator is not the right word, but my play 
resembled an agitator, but my that wasn't my mindset. I wasn't maybe like after my fifth or sixth year, I kind of clued into what I've been doing. But when I first got there, even juniors, I'm like, I didn't make a point of getting under people's skin. I just, that's the way I played. So I never thought that way. I would just play hard, finish everything, every, every single check, go to the net hard. If you're looking at me the wrong way, I'll give you a little stick after the whistle. Um, and, and that's just the way I played. And maybe it wasn't until halfway through my career, coaches and GMs, there was a common denominator where these people are like, oh, you're, you're agitating, you're doing this. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe that's kind of the guy I am. All good because I'm just going to continue what I've been doing. But it was in my mindset, like, oh, I got to get on this guy's skin today or this guy's skin today. It was just how I played and who I am. Yeah, but you're, no, wait, you're different than that. Because Rafi Torres, he's going to fucking bury you. And then be like, oh, what I do? Oh, I'm not fighting anybody. Matt Cook, oh, what I do? I'm not fighting right. anybody. No, I, I don't. Right, I don't right, even right. like the yes. Tucker will fucking go yes. you. Tutu will go yeah, you. And you know what? That's why I end up fighting so much because I make a big hit. I'm gonna respect. I'm gonna respect the game and have to answer the bell. Yeah. And that's again my foundation. What I watched growing up. I watched guys hit, and then I watched the fight right after. So that was a part of the game. You hit someone. You you blow someone up. You got to pay the consequences. The I was willing to do that night in and night out. Yeah, right. so, like, because, like, when you hit McKinnon and, and Samuel Gerrard comes up to you and you punch Gerrard <laughs> the, and, and you get whatever you got, like, six games for that for that, for that that punch yeah. to Gerrard. And then you ate a few, yeah. actually, from Eric Johnson. Like, all of a sudden, he right, jumped where did in. Right. Come from? And, and, and he started right. fighting. Okay, but and that's I, take me through your mindset there because when you're – when you're Zach Ronaldo and you make that hit on, you know, our, you know, their best player, a star player, right? And, and Nathan McKinnon, are you looking around or you're expecting somebody to come and here comes a player and, and, and all of a sudden, like, now he's not ready for a fight. Like, I don't know what he's coming and skating towards you for. And, you know, Paul Bissonette, Tyson Nash, who were, who were a part of the, the Coyotes broadcast, like, I think they, like, defended you. I know you were playing for the Coyotes at yeah. the time. But, like, yeah. what, what, like, walk us through that play. Like, would you have done anything different? Like, were you expecting him to, to punch you there and, and to fight you? 100%, because that's – well, when I hit McKinnon and he showed that he was hurt, whether it was McKinnon or not, if I hit someone and they show any sign of that they're hurt mm – -hmm. Someone's someone's coming after me, or someone's coming my direction, and they're thinking about it. So that's I just put my guard up. And the night before that, Tom Wilson high sticked me right in the nose and broke my nose. So I'm playing with a broken nose. I got no visor on. I'm very vulnerable, and I'm ready to go if you even come at me. And, and the wind when I'm skating would agitate my nose. <laughs> so so um I hit McKinnon, and McKinnon I don't know what happened, but Girardi. It, there wasn't a clear cut direction to me. So as he's skating, there was a player in front of him. He went around the player and then still continued to come at me. And once I saw that, I'm not taking any chance. And I dropped my shit thinking he's going to drop his and I'm not going to let you get the first punch in. And I'm just thinking, protect myself, protect my nose. It's already busted. I don't want shit to explode on me again. So this guy's already dodged one of his players to get to me. Let's go. That's my mindset. Tutu did that one time when he ran Madonna. Remember Tutu runs Madonna. Somebody's coming in, some defenseman. They're like, I have to do something. And the one well, punch. And he one turns punch. around all in one motion and mm -hmm. knocks him out. Like, mm -hmm. that's yeah. your mindset, though. Like, don't come at me right. then. Like, protect. <laughs> yes, you got to protect yourself. Man, oh, God, yep, did you, at all costs. God, did you fuck guys up, though? Listen, when you. <laughs> he hit Anton Volchenkov so hard one time. And, and let me tell you this right now. We've had we know Craig Berube, love him, Chief. We had him mm -hmm. on the podcast, yeah. and he praised you, big yeah. dog. Yeah, praised you. Said you're the best. Mm -hmm. The way you're you're able to to catch guys, you hit with force, and he he pumped mm -hmm. your tires up, man. And he he doesn't do that much with many guys. Just no, so you know. no, but he likes your type he of guys. He likes you, man. Why don't you try out for the <laughs> yeah, Blues? I love, <laughs> I'd love to play. I played for Chief when in Philly. He was my he was my head. He was my assistant coach, and then mm -hmm. Laddie got fired, and they put Chief in, and he was. For me, he's like a godsend as a coach because he comes from that hard-nosed place and he Hell respects yeah. my game and he, he, uh, he's been in my shoes. So, I mean, it, it went hand-in-hand. Hand. Fucking, he's a great guy. He saw me from drafted as a kid. I was I don't, 18 at the time I got drafted there. So, he saw me becoming from a kid up into a young man. And uh, that's really cool for me when a coach is with you for that long and he sees you grow as a person and a player. I love Chief. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And you know what? It's funny, man. 
Because, and I've been doing this for a while, and I, I, I've always had players come up and complain about a coach. I've never had a player complain about I Chief, know. ever. And there's been a lot of coaches that come through here. So, like, they, they respect him because they know where they're coming from with, with Chief. They may not always like it, but at the end of the day, like, he's so honest and he up is. front. It's, like, it's kind of hard not to respect that. So, so you say, like, he supported you. He was good for you. And give me a coach that didn't support yeah. you and was, like, trying to get you to change your game, yeah. gave you shit. Did you ever have teammates, like – like leaders on the team come up to you and be like, you, you got to stop doing this shit. You can't do this. You're hurting the team. Or do you feel like for the most part, you, you had that support internally in the dressing room? Um, thinking back, maybe I think a couple guys, uh, I don't like the name drop, but a couple guys, maybe, maybe two or three on each team I've been on were like, Holy shit. He hit that guy again. He got another penalty. Like, you know what I mean? I felt that energy. They didn't even have to say it. I could just see it on their yeah. face or I could see the way they, they talk to me and the way they carry themselves with me in public and, and stuff like that. When it comes to coaching, um, it wasn't the head coach, but I'm assuming it's coming from a head coach. Uh, it was more the assistant coaches busting my balls about um, hitting. And cause I think their mindset was, you know, you're hitting so hard, you're taking yourself out of position. And I mean, you know, Rick talk, I was, I was a a talk with my coach and I remember him talking to me about uh, a conversation that him and him and the one assistant coaches had. And the assistant coach was like, talk, he's, he's always out of position and talk was like, yeah, but when he's out of position, he's blowing someone up. So that guy's also out of position and is actually fast enough that he can get back into position. But if you haven't played the game as a coach, then you won't understand talk's point. Yes, I might have been out of position, but I'm also taking someone out. Yep. So it's, they're still even in the play. I get, I'm fast if I can get back. But for the most part, man, it was um, like I remember Dale Hunter. Dale, sometimes he would tell me, because every every single hit in junior, if it was that big, I was getting suspended because it was just too hard. And even the refs were like, we haven't seen someone hit this hard and we can't just let it go because you're hurting people. So Dale said, I was like, Zach, you know what you have to do sometimes? Just hit the glass, and you're going to scare the shit out of the whole team, <laughs> yeah. and no one's going to want to come around you again. Yep. So I, I honestly started doing that, and it, it worked. But um, obviously, like, my body can't only take so many you know, hits to the glass. No <laughs> I got to start hitting the body. So, yeah, um, yeah those are like just two things that stand in my mind. But if you don't if you haven't play the game as a coach, it's hard to relate. A player like myself and can't listen no surprise like the guys that support him chief rick Tockett, <laughs> dale hunter like i mean Me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i'm just saying coaches, coaches wise. like those are old school guys man i'm not surprised to hear that at all yeah yeah you just gotta beat the guy up the ice i mean that is a weird well you're, you're out of play no I'm, I'm hitting somebody so if you do that and you take first three steps up the ice and you beat him up the ice you're in a, you're, you're fine you're absolutely fine hey right. man i'm not gonna lie to you though i love bj crombean he was my roommate, the nicest, sweetest human being in the world. Mm-hmm. God, did you fuck him up? Oh, I just knew he was getting a little too comfortable. He was a little laissez faire, like da da da. And mm. you turned. He threw the first punch too. No, Cr- I know. Crombie did. Crombie yeah. did. Yeah. And he's just, his chin was up. And I, and the way you were, the way you punched, like you had a re, just like you have to, like you have to dive in to hit the guy, and you weren't worried, yeah. worried about him catching you. And you caught my oh. buddy. Oh God! Did you put him down? We love uh, BJ, but Beaner, man. did you? Yeah, I heard he's a great did, guy. I heard everything oh. I've heard from him about him, he's an awesome guy. Did you? Did you train uh, for fighting? By the way, I did not. No, really, you never took boxing my, lessons or anything. No, my mentality. I mean, I did kickboxing like for like a summer, just because my okay. buddies wanted to do it, and like that was like a cool thing to do off the ice. Um, but no, man, on my mentality, you know, but. At the same time, we could fight, you know, Major Bantam. Like, I was ripping people's cages off in Major yeah. Bantam. I'm assuming maybe you guys were too, but, like, where I, <laughs> where I come from, where I come from, my buddies were, like, downtown kids who played hockey, and they could fight because they fought off the ice. So they're like, yeah, maybe yeah. I'll fight on yeah. the ice so I don't I can get all the anger out of me on the ice. So I'm coming from – friends who just loved to fight that's what we did like in the summertime with spring teams together just to fight man that was some fun that we did but my mindset was kill or be killed i didn't care if i was gonna get knocked out because if i'm not getting knocked out i'm gonna knock you out and i didn't think about defense i thought about throwing as hard as i can 
not as many, but maybe like five ones from hell. Yeah. And maybe that catches yeah. you. If it doesn't catch you, it's going to catch me. And I'm cool with it. And let's roll. That's my mindset. Throw from downtown, baby. From the I, hip. I get right. you. That's right. Hey, what about your, like, what? so like your high school was a hardcore growing up, like going to school and stuff. Like, I'm guessing you didn't go to a private yeah. school. How many high school did you go no. to? Could you play for like three or four junior teams, right? Yeah. Yeah, I went to high school in Mississauga, high school in London. Um, but every every year after the every year I finished school, I come right back home for like three or four months. So I go right back to public school, no AC, and it was um, no AC. It was it, it was yeah, no AC it was a sweatshop. It was wild. Um, but yeah, man, it was. Um, I grew I grew up around some some hard nosed people, and uh, I had the best of both worlds. I had that side of me, and I had the hockey side of me. So hockey kept me out of trouble, but I always have one in one foot on, on the other side as well. Okay, so look, man. I mean, some of your more infamous hits that led to suspensions, like Latang, you got eight games for Paquette, five. We mentioned Gerard, six. Like, which one do you feel like you 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 got the wrong end on the stick? Like you didn't. You don't believe you did anything wrong. You don't feel like you deserved a suspension, or do you agree with the league? And like, 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 what were those conversations like with player safety? Did you ever try to defend yourself? Did you have the opportunity to do so, or you just kind of had to sit there and take it? When I was with Philly, <laughs> I'll never forget it. Mm-hmm. Homer, Paul Holmgren, he went to he went to war for me. He he would we'd be. I'd be across the table from him. There'd be the, the speaker, the phone in front of both of us in between us. And we'd be looking at each other dead in the eyes. There would be no pre-planned. There'd be no nothing written down. We wouldn't even watch the video. And he'd go to war for me. He's like, no, he's like, you know, this is who he is. And look at look at him over here. He, he turns around. He sees Zach. He gets scared. He turns around. Like, I'm, I'm like on the, on the war table because he's so intense. And he's just vouching for me and protecting me and supporting me wrong or right. And I think that's what GM should be doing. Obviously, if you're, you know, it's clear cut, you know, illegal, then yes, even the player needs to speak up and say, hey, I was out of line. I lost control, whatever. I was going too fast, couldn't stop, blah, blah, blah. But I had so much support from Paul that I will never forget it. And I will always be loyal to him and that organization. And that's a reason, a good reason why. But other GMs that I've had, they've they wanted me to write down on a piece of paper, you know, some notes and um, some pros and cons to what I did or what I could have done better and stuff like that. And I didn't like that because there, you guys know, I mean, the game happens so fast. Yeah, maybe he does know I'm coming. Maybe he's like, oh, well, fuck it. I'm going to turn and haven't hit my backside. I know he's going to continue. Um, maybe I... I'll risk getting hurt for his suspension. I don't know. I mean, the one hit that I should definitely not have been suspended for was me on, uh, is it Erickson on Detroit? Mm-hmm. I think my first year in the league. And I, I caught him with his head down right behind the net. I popped him up. He went flying. And I got two games for it. And I don't believe at all I should have been suspended for that. Uh, I don't have video in front of me, so I don't want to speak out of terms about other hits. I can't remember the process I went through, but... Um, for the most part, I mean, the way the league was going and you dissect it every single inch and you break it down to milliseconds. So you're watching it in lesser than slow motion. They look bad. If you slow it down that way, oh, everything happens so fast in a game and it's so hard to predict if he's going to, if his angle is going to change, is his head going to change when I'm coming? Like it's hard, man. It's, it's tough to, to dissect and vouch for, myself when they're breaking it down and slowing it down and shit like that you can't win okay so i remember though in the in the dressing room though after the the latang hit and like the media is asking you all the questions and you're like hey look man i i changed the game like that hit changed the game so even though you took the suspension like you really believe like like you took the suspension. You got suspended eight games. And that's a lot, man. When you look about, you know, look at what uh, you're money. making and how much money they're taking out. But do you feel like at, at the end of the day, sometimes it helped the team? Is that what you're saying there? Well, it it did, and it's just a fact because we had we had. It's, it's unfortunate that that event had to happen for the change of the game. And what it was after that after that hit, we had guys fight and be so involved in a emotional high energy game 
that have never been in that type of environment before in their whole lives. So after the game, everyone was so pumped up. I remember it to this day because I felt that energy. And everyone was like, they had a great time. It was a fun game. Like, but it, it's so unfortunate that that event had to change the game. And I wasn't, I wasn't proud that Latang got hit and that event happened, but that's what he asked me. And I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, no, it didn't change the game because it did. In, in a, it took a negative event to make a positive change because our team got so much energy from that. They were fighting. They were involved emotionally. It was the guys had a good time on the ice. And, you know, it, it got taken out of context big time and maybe the way my demeanor looked and, you know, how I answered the question came off a little wrong. But it, wasn't my, it wasn't my intention. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm in the dressing room. Like, I'm in the dressing room. The guys are all around me. They're, they're, they're bragging and boasting about their game, their high energy, what they did to this guy, what happened. And I'm feeding off the energy at the same time. So, uh, yeah, I got a little chip on my shoulder. So, you, you, they, no one understands unless you, you're in that environment. So, you put it out on media like that and you, you break it down, how they broke it down. And they paint the picture that they painted. I look like a complete fool. And that's what it is. But at the end of the day, I don't regret it because I just answer honestly. There's no black and white with me. There's no gray area with me. So I'm going to tell it how it is. And if I get in trouble, then that's, that's on me. And I'll handle like a man. Hey, there is one time, though, that you probably should have fought somebody and you didn't. And it was, the result wasn't good. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I, if you refresh my memory, I will honestly answer you. You're playing the Devils one time. And somebody had a big hit behind the net. And the puck came out, and uh, you went up to him, and right afterwards, he, he tipped one in. Really sexy goal, too. Do you know who I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I hit somebody, no. Zach, in a four check, <laughs> and the puck came out, Man. and I whiffed on a shot, and then all of a sudden, you came over and like said something to me, and then right after that, I tipped the puck, and I scored. And at that point, I think I had more goals than Claude Giroux, which is like one. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just grabbed me and ragdolled me there, man. Was, but anyway, I had to throw I, that out there, I, man. You know what, man? I, I, um, I'm, I want. I don't want to say I'm a spot picker, but I'm not dumb. You know what I mean? And <laughs> when, but when push comes to shove, I will, I'll never want to be embarrassed by anybody. So if someone tries to embarrass me and you're you're joshing your gloves at me and you're trying to show me up, then yes, I'm not going to be embarrassed. But at the same time, I'm not going to go looking for guys way out of my weight class just to try and prove a point. Oh, I appreciate that, actually. <laughs> hey, hey <laughs> were, weren't you a big Lindros fan, like, growing up? Like, did you ever did you ever talk to Eric? Like, like, like why why were you such a big fan? I mean, I shouldn't ask why. Everyone loved Eric Lindros. He was such <laughs> a, he was such a you yeah, know, phenom, too. like, coming up, and we've had yeah. him on and whatever. So, But what was it about yeah. his game in general that, that attracted you to him, and did you ever meet him in Philly? He did everything. He goal scorer, passer, he fought, he hit, he could skate. He, to me, was a, a, a hockey player. He was, in my, in my opinion, the best hockey player in his time because a hockey player is not just a person who scores the more goals. There are so many factors that make uh, the best hockey player. Mm -hmm. To me, in my eyes, in my opinion, he was the best hockey player in that era because he could do it all. And even now, I, mean, you know, I ask all these kids, who's your favorite player? Oh, I'm McDavid. I'm like, why? I'm like, well, he scores all the goals. But that doesn't make the hockey player yes he's the best goal scorer i'm not saying mcdavid but example he's not the best hockey player you know what i mean like for who me is? who is like he, um i love as all around hockey player i want to say he's the best hockey player but right now he's he's top three for me is tommy wilson oh okay. he does we, it all we love tommy we, we, he yeah, he's we, a great guy we, we, we've had his ass he, he's great I just sent him some waggle golf shit. Hey, me. I mean, text I me, Tom. Tell me you got your waggle golf stuff. Hey, you fight him? <laughs> no, I haven't. I, I didn't fight him. We never. Um, he never asked me, and never asked him. We never even crossed sort of paths yeah. like that. Um, but for me, fuck, he shoots, scores, passes, DKs, power play, fights. It. I mean, he does it all. For me, it's. Uh, I want him on my team um, over a lot of players in the league. So. To me, I loved Lindros because he did it all. And I wasn't a – I love to watch hockey games. I only watched Lindros' shifts. Mm -hmm. So when Flyers were playing, be on the TV, 
Uh, I'd be downstairs in the basement where we had four concrete walls and a mattress and a net, and I just shot pucks. And when Lindros was on, ran upstairs, watched the shift. He was off. I go right back downstairs. <laughs> um, I met him. I did. I met him at the uh, Winter Classic in Philly, and uh, that was a really cool experience. I brought my dad with me because we're both super fans at the time. And I told him, I said, Mr. Lindros, I said, you're the reason I play hockey today. And he signed a couple of jerseys for me, and uh, kind of on my way I went. You wow. called him Mr. Lindros. You didn't call him, hey, okay. hey, Big E, what's up, baby? <laughs> no, no, man. I, you know what? My dad was there. So if I'm fucking yelling at my idol, I'm like, hey, Big E, my dad would like, slap me inside the head. What are you doing? Oh, like, this is Mr. Lindros. Yeah. He's shake his hand, you know? Hey, oh, yeah. let, me so, give you, let me give you two names. Uh, Matthew Kachuk and Brad Marchand. Like, you like their games? Like, you feel like they... They bring this the style and the the, the the type of game that you that you respect. Um, yes, yes and no, yes and no. Um, I critique a lot. I mean, obviously, I love Chucky's game and I love Marshy's game, but um, I think to be honest with you, Chucky's skating can improve a little bit. He's not the quickest guy, and he's kind of sloppy on the ice. To be honest with you, my opinion, and. Uh, Marshy's got to get a shorter stick. I fucking hate how his stick is so long, man. Look at you. He he might like that like that. You are a coach. Of course he does, but I think it it looks ugly on the ice. I just, it looks so long compared to his. But I'm talking, I'm talking about. So you're saying he could be better if he cut out, cut down a stick a bit. You think he's in tight? Yeah, cut down a stick a little bit. Okay. But you know what, man? He's so Mm -hmm. gifted. I've watched him train. I've played with him before and he, uh, he's a wizard with his stick. It's, it's, I, I've watched him. I, and I've always thought to myself, buddy, how is your stick so long and you get so tight in those areas and you're able to dangle through everybody? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. Me. But just don't lick, Marshy. Don't lick buddy, people. Don't yeah. fucking lick anybody, man. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's yeah, you know, so you, part of the game. So listen, you don't like the antics, is what you're saying. Like anybody who's a sideshow, no, you're not you're not you're not into the sideshows. No, and I'm not even into chirping. If you're chirping me, I'm looking at you and say, fight me. That's, like, don't chirp, don't bother is. chirping. Thank you fight me. Thank Fuck you. off or fight Thank me. Thank you. Yeah, so you weren't I'm a big chirping. you. You weren't I a big was, chirper. I wasn't grown up that way. He didn't say anything. No. Okay. He didn't say a fucking thing. He just put no. you down and said, "What are you going to do?" Mm-hmm. I love that. What about Reaver? Okay, let me let me set this up. And I love Ryan Reeves. I've had him out to my house. Blah blah blah. He took my job. Love the guy. He's a nice guy. Yeah. But, like, he's bagging guys up. And I love Marcus Foligno, but he's always doing the fucking, I'm fucking, do-do. and Tom Wilson does it too. But Tom Wilson's penalty killing. He's scoring 20 goals. Power play. Power play. He's, you know, he's a right-hand yeah. man, of, one of the best players ever. What do you think of Reaver's game right now? Doesn't he have it pretty good? Um, I don't watch. I honestly don't watch hockey. I don't. Um, but I've seen, obviously, through playing and stuff like that, he is uh, – he likes to run his mouth and he can because no one has yet to put a, I mean, maybe I've missed a fight or two, but he's had, and he's been punched a couple times in the head, but for 90% of his fights, he's untouchable. And it fucking, I hate saying it because I wish I was as big and as thick and as strong and in that weight class to handle myself with him. But he, he has every right to brag and boast and be as cocky and confident as he shows. And all the power to him because no one no one chirps him back in the media. No one's fucking – he's the king right now, in my opinion. Of course he's he untouchable. In his weight class, he's untouchable. Yeah, but he – my point is, I guess, because you don't watch. He's just he's a little loud. He, he beats up that Marcus Foligno. Your Marcus, point is that there's no real heavies for him no, to my go point toe-to-toe is, with. Whenever he got in the league and you got fucking Colt Nor. And you got goddamn Brian McGratton and shit kicking right. sons of bitches everywhere. He's not flexing his muscle seven years, eight, ten years ago. He's doing it now, right. and it's like you didn't do it then. I don't know. I'm just. I love Reaver. No, I'm not. I'm not the antic man. I'm. I'm a. You I'm beat someone up, you go to the box. I'm not. I'm not celebrating. I'm not doing much. Maybe it's a salute to the fans mm-hmm. yeah. for cheering so loud, but that's about it. About it. What about Ovi? I mean, he doesn't fight, but he he, cr- he, he crushes cats. And and he's I love. I agree. I agree. I think he's totally changed his game around from on the defensive side of things too. So and he's got Lavi. I mean, Lavi, Lavi can hit your sweet spot and find your buttons and then push that button to make you become a totally on board bought in player. So, I mean, Ovi does it all. He does. He does it all. And he's definitely he's up cool, there dude. with the greatest hockey players of all time. Mm-hmm. Hey, let me ask you this because. Um... 
you always had, uh, I mean, listen, like we, we've gone through like suspensions and all that. I mean, one time you got suspended, they sent you down and, and you got suspended in the American League. Yeah, like, you had like two suspensions going on at <laughs> once, like in the American League and the I think NHL. I'm in the Hall of Fame you for are. it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, nobody else can say that they're suspended like in two leagues at the same oh, time to the point where like when they sign you or bring you back up, you got to sit out <laughs> your suspension still, you know? But. But where was your, like, mental health and all that? Like, were you ever, like, in a dark place? Did it ever, like, um, really hurt you internally that people were talking about you this way and you had this reputation just from, like, playing hockey? Like, did, did were you always able to handle it mentally is my question. No, not at all, man. It, it's um, a really, really hard place to be as a human, not even a hockey player, fuck hockey at the end of the day, when it comes to your mental health, you're yeah. a human at the end of the day. And yeah, it, it, it fucked me up in, in, a, in bad ways. I remember, you know, my first year in junior, I'm doing meet and greets and people are like, Oh my God, you're actually a nice person. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Like just cause I'm one way on the ice doesn't mean I'm going to be a goof off the ice. I'm actually, I come from a good family. I got good morals, I got a good foundation. Like who I am on the ice should not be, who I am off the ice. So that was really hard, even from a junior thing, as a young kid, you know, 17, 18 years old, being portrayed as this cycle off the ice as well. And then what happened in Boston, that was really hard to digest. And I'm, I still got that, um, I still got that feeling. I and mean, that feeling will never leave me. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a, it's like you were, um, shit, man. I, even, I don't even have the words to describe it, but, I got suspended. So the night before I got suspended in, in Boston, they called me and said, Hey, you're going to go get put on waivers. I said, okay, no problem. It is what it is. But they said, but we want you to play tonight. At the time I'm young and I'm like, yeah, okay. You guys need me. I'm on the team. I'm, you know, you got me for a reason. This is, I'm loyal to you. I love your team. I'm playing no matter what. Now, if I was on, if now, if I knew what I do now, I wouldn't have played that game. So I'm on waivers, right? Makes sense. So whatever, I play, I get suspended five games. They send me down still. I'm like, shit. I'm like, I don't even know if they're going to call me back up to serve my five-game suspension. So we play the next night in Providence. The refs and my coaches tell me, we're looking for you. Don't do anything tonight, or we're going to suspend you double what you were suspended in the NHL. This is already even before the game even starts. I just walked into the room. And I got people breathing down my neck. I got refs breathing down my neck saying, you better not do anything or we're coming after you. So not that I made a mark of hitting people. It's just when you're told things, you know, bad things happen when you keep talking about it. Like, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. I like, don't think of pink elephant, pink elephant, pink elephant. Don't think about it. You're going to think of it. It's going to happen. But I didn't think that's the time. Anyways, playing the game, I hit this. I don't even know who I hit. Hit this guy, send him flying. To me, it was a clean hit. I don't think I should have been suspended for that. That's all. So you can add that to the list. I don't think I should be suspended for that hit either in the AHL. So I get suspended five games there. I'm like, holy shit. And I feel like the world's coming down on me. All the GMs are pissed. Coaches are pissed. Teammates are pissed. I'm like, everyone's against me right now. I can't do nothing right. But at the end of the day, man, like, I, if I believe that, I'm in the right. That's good enough for me. And I don't let people's thoughts bring me down. Obviously they weigh on me, but they don't bring me down. There's a difference. Right. Um, And it took me a year and a half to serve five game suspension in the NHL. Boston never called me up once over a year and a half. It's a 45 minute drive from Providence to Boston. They didn't even call me once to sit in the press box to, canceled not even one of my games though where i wouldn't went there i would have jogged would have walked there to serve one of my games and they didn't call me for a year and a half to come up and serve any of my games so the next year i'm free agent i don't i don't think i'm gonna get contract because i still have a five game suspension hanging over my head yeah, as a yeah. free agent but rick talkett calls me i rub it up in camp first five games of the season i serve my five games on my to my career i pursue again and it's all thanks to chica i want to say rick talk 90 percent, and chica a little bit you know that 10 percent for listening to talk so my my hockey 
love was reconnected because of talking and i thank him to this day everybody loves talking too oh yeah oh God yeah damn right how was yep. how was chica by the way he yeah. was like 26 What's years old deal? at the time like Did was he partying with the guys was he <laughs> was that an awkward situation <laughs> like what was that like um i didn't talk to him i didn't talk to him i just never it's yeah. like okay hey how you doing you know, good luck in camp i know talk loves you blah blah, blah. yeah and then I didn't see him. And if I did see him, I said, hey, how you doing? I continue on my way. I'm not going to, I'm going to, you know, mind my own business. I'm going to get involved in the business. If you got a conversation and you call me up to your office, I talk and that's about it. I'm a, I'm a soldier. I'm a yes, sir, no, sir kind of guy. I'm a, if you ask my opinion, I'll give it to you. But if, if you know, we're just kind of having a simple conversation, I'm a simple kind of guy. Hey, so did, I mind my own business. Did you already know talk? I'm trying to put things together. What's that? Did you already know Talkit when he when he signed you then? Like when he brought you to camp on a tryout with Arizona. Yeah. Had you guys crossed paths in Philly or what? No. Okay. Nothing. Oh, wow. Okay. Nothing at all. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. Pretty cool. Hey, when you were down and out, did you ever get into, were you drinking a lot? Like were you, like, are you, I don't know, any anything like substance abuse stuff? Like were you like, I got to drink um, this shit I, out? I was, um, this, 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 this goes back to like my family. So, um, when I was my first year in the A, like uh, my family is all on meds for, oh, yeah. you name it, they're all meds for it. So um, my first year in the A, kind of like mentally struggling and kind of like, you know, letting, I'm like vouching to my parents, I'm, like letting it all out to my parents and they're like, Zach, you need to go on meds. And I'm like, okay, let's hop on the meds. I'm like, you know, cause they're all on meds. So I'm listening to them. I'm trusting them. They're my family. So anyway, I go on the antidepressants and I'm on sleeping pills and probably for about a year and a half or two years or whatever. And I'm like, I'm just not me. Even my play, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, I'm slow and sluggish. I'm like, what is wrong with me? So I flushed all my antidepressants and all the sleeping pills down the toilet. And I said, I'm done being controlled by um, medication. And I just want to be free and I want to be mean. If you can't handle me, then you're not good for me. And that's kind of where I've been ever since my first year in the A, like when I was 20, 21 years old. Um, but the sleeping pills, man, the sleeping pills would always creep up on me because I played that. Obviously, you guys know that high emotional game. And, you know, after the game, I'm still third period. I'm just getting my I'm just getting involved in the game even more. Like every period I amped up, I amped mm. up every period because every I needed more. I needed more. I need more. So by the third period, at the end of the game, I'm like, fuck, it's over. I'm like, I'm still ready to go. I'm like, know. you know, what's going on in here? So then I wasn't, I'm not a big drinker. If all the boys are going out and having a good time, I'm going to go, but I don't have booze in my house. I'm not a drinker. So, um, yeah, it was the sleeping pills for me at the end of the game, go home, glass of wine, one turns into two, turns into three and, you know, bad things happen. And then you're mixing them with, um, drinks sometimes when you're, you're going out and it's just not good. What pills? What pills? Ambien? Yeah, but they weren't even from the team. Like they were from, yeah. you know, my my yeah. family doctor. Yeah. So, because that was just how I was kind of like born into it type of thing. My parents, you know, my whole family. They're still to this day. They're all medication. So, um, it wasn't even like if I needed them from the team. Yeah, it was, but I had them too. So it's not. I didn't go out of my way to try and find them and scavenge around. I had them, and I and it was normal for me to a degree, but um. Yeah, I, I kicked that habit. I saw uh, I saw a video of myself at home, and it wasn't a pretty picture. And what I do saw you mean? that. And what do you I, mean by that? What do you mean by that? Uh, my wife took a video of me. Oh. I came home one night, and uh, I was just eating at the counter. And uh, just the state of mind, like, I just wasn't there. Like, if you saw this video, you're like, your soul, your brain, Gone. your heart is not in mm. the body Gone. right now. Yep. Well, saw know. that video, buddy, and uh, everything was everything has been gone from there. To be honest with you, I think I, and that was in Boston. See, it was in Boston when that happened. That video was taken. I was in Boston, so everything happens for a reason. I saw the video and uh, cut everything out, and I've been, uh, I want to say clean, but then you know with surgeries and stuff, um, you know the the painkillers oh, come into play as well, God. and I don't have an addictive personality, but. Um, obviously I kind of just reiterated I was addicted to him I was addicted but at the time I didn't think I was but painkillers too man I've, I had three surgeries um, and I, I, I did I liked the painkillers a lot yeah, and after surgery was done I was like fuck I'm like 
where can I get more of these? I didn't go out of my way to get more, but that feeling was there to a degree. But as time goes on and, and kind of gets out of your system, you don't feel like it anymore, and then you're out of your system. But when I was on the pain medicines, I, I can totally understand why people um, get addicted and they want them day in and day out. It's a, it's a real thing. Well, it takes, your, it takes over your soul, brother. You know, you, you, right. it takes it over your soul. And you and the worst feeling, I had to hide it from everybody. I had to be happy cam in a locker room. I'm addicted to these fucking things. Coming off, I'm withdrawing out the walls. It was, it was, it was terrible. But it's, so your wife saw you, you're not there. You're eating on it. You're eating probably Ambien and staying up on Ambien, which is a fucking psychoville. And your wife's staring at you. She goes, no, no, I'm going to film this. I'm not going to post it. I'm just going to send it to you. And you're going to look at it the next day when you're coherent and you're going to fucking <laughs> realize that you need to change some things. That's what she did. That's right. Yeah, man. Well, good. Oh, she's a good, she's a yeah, fucking badass wife, dude. Damn right. So damn right. Yeah. Hey, yeah, he, yeah, and yeah. listen, man, we appreciate your time. I, love I, you, dude. I, I do want to ask you, like, I mean, you play with some star players though, too, like Bergeron, um, you know, Danny Briere, Jeff Carter. I mean, Giroux. I mean, you play with some yeah. good players. A- anybody like really ever take you under their wing? I mean, they're making money. They're, they're trying to like, just like, just to be there for you. Like who, who was the teammate? that you like were closest with is, is there a guy that stands it out was, to me? Um, there was, there was so many people that undercoverly took me under their wing and I, I can't say so many, there's so many people that did that unintentionally that maybe they might have not have thought they were doing it. But to me, I'm like, I'm gravitating towards this guy because you're helping me out a lot, whether they knew it or not. But my first year in the league was everything that I dreamt of the NHL being. I was with Chris Pronger. I was with Scott Hartnell. I was with Yager. I was with Kimo. I was with Vorchek. I was with Simmons Drew. Like I, I, Danny B, Le Cavalier, Talbot. Like these yes. guys were like, you guys, you guys were, I watched them growing up as a kid and then get to play with them and then learn from them. And the culture they had in that locker room and in that organization in my first year was everything I thought the NHL was. So everyone I named right there, they were, they had me underneath their wings, every one of them, because whether they knew it or not, but I idolized them so much as a kid growing up and then playing with them. I wasn't starstruck. I would fit right in. Um, Those guys, every single one of them did a tremendous job whether they do it or not they changed my life forever so mm. everyone cool, man. love hearing that I man like, listen I you, like hearing that you shit. sound like you're in a good spot yeah, man you man you're, you're you're coaching you're helping kids yeah. and regardless uh you, you played a long time in the nhl and you had a long pro career you have a lot to offer from that standpoint for hey, sure you're well spoken dude yep. and you're, you're i gotta look at your picture again i don't know how your nose looks but i think you're a pretty handsome guy i think you could do a lot man <laughs> your, your options are open big dog <laughs> Yeah, just keep doing Thanks, what you're boy. doing, man. Thanks. Yeah, you're, you're the great. man, Zach, dude. We'll, we'll we'll stay in touch. Thanks for coming on, big boy. No problem, fellas. Take care. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. See this. you, buddy. It's appreciate awesome. it, Zach. Take care, man. The Chemistry Podcast is brought to you by Bellman and Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get out there to Detroit, Missouri. Check it out on one side. You got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. Again, Find something that works for you. Get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the winter. All right, that was Zach with a C cam. I know. Great guy. He should have fought me when I scored that one. No, it's, it, it could have been bad for you. Yeah, I know. He could actually throw. He's tougher than fuck. He could throw it on. I love his um, <coughs> his rationale and reasoning. He's just like, dude, that's how I grew up. That's how I looked at the game. That's how I viewed the game. These are the guys that I thought were like hockey players. That's how the game is supposed to be played, and that's how he went out and played it. Yeah, it's his personality, man. I is it, it hard to change? You think when you're once you're like that, you're wired like that. Can you change? Um, you could slow it down a little bit and uh, tighten up and just focus on other things. But you got that killer in you, man. Mm-hmm. You want to you want to hit guys. You know, I know the feeling. As that's why I hit you, and I have to. You make me money, mm-hmm. and I don't want to hurt your brain. Yeah, and I, I still hit you because I'm psycho. Well, don't do that. Well, I won't anymore. You know, as uh, as as odd as it may sound, Cam. Um, the fact that what? he was crazy and getting suspended all the time is what really what kept him in the NHL. It's like you know, people are like, oh, he should have changed and not do that. Well, then 
if he's changing and he's not keeping other teams off balance and opposing teams off balance, like because they don't know what this guy's going to do, then he's not really as useful on your team. You no, know but you, you don't have to. You could still hit guys without getting oh, suspended. I know. You know, and I and, and I had to change shit too, man. Yeah, but like, there were a lot of he, listen. Let's act. Yeah, but when let's you not act of, like every hit he made, he got suspended. No, but when you get dinged all the time, you're Mark no, Man. No one wants to touch you. Like you're you're out of the loop. Mm-hmm. No one's looking at you. No. It's like being injured. So it's like now you got to regroup again. Now yeah. you got to like start over yes. in the lineup. And you got to hit another guy, but hopefully you don't hurt him. But mm-hmm. he kept hurting guys, and so you have to get suspended. So it just set you back. He could have played like 600 games. Yeah, if he didn't get suspended. No, I mean that, man. You know what I mean, though? like, um, you know, there is um, there is a uh, video that's out there from the Department of Player Safety Camp. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I brought this up with Zach. And maybe this happens more than I realize, but I've never seen the Department of Player Safety make a video to explain why a player didn't get suspended. You know what I'm saying? Has well, that you happened? Ne- You've never been in a training camp. That happens every goddamn year. No, 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 no. I'm talking Department of Player Safety. Mm-hmm. No, they sp- sp- yeah, they did it with fucking Cook. They did it with goddamn the other dude from Minnesota. They did it every time you Do go you understand the videos I'm talking about where they say, yes, when this go, is roughing. Yes, Andy. He's it's been, every fucking training camp. You go in there. They, ha- they have a, I know that. They always have, well, a, they well, clip off stuff where they say, hey, this well, is. They, and they talk about a specific guy, Matt Cook. This to, is during the season. They yeah. came out with a video during the I year. Know. That happens sometimes. That showed a hit. No, I don't see it publicly. Where the public Are you in the goddamn locker room? What are you this talking is about? public. The player's safety okay. put out a okay. video. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah, they, where that they, might be different. Where they put out, this is not something that's sent to teams for them to look okay, at. Okay, in training camp. No, this okay. is during Jeez. the year. They come out with a video okay. like they do when a player My gets bad. suspended. My bad, homie. And they come out with a video to explain why a player didn't get suspended. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that's that too. training camp education, teaching all that. No, 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 I, that's not what I'm I, talking I, I, about. I, my bad on that. This is like during the year. It's when like I what? S- I still see it during the year. So shit will go down during the year, and you will have a yeah. They may send stuff to teams. I guess no, that. but you'll have a meeting with the or like every team will like mm-hmm. be like okay in January now everybody every team in the month period will have a meeting mm-hmm. about something that happened. Yeah, yeah, that happens. Okay. It's still not like a good thing to be a part of that. I guess. Mm-hmm. Unless it's a good clean hit. This is roughing. This is murdering. <laughs> and, you know, and he did because he hit hard. And I know that feeling where you want to, mm-hmm. you want to punch, you want to hit through the guy. Yeah. And he certainly did that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, dude, like, he could have, he could have laid off a couple times and it would have helped mm-hmm. his career. That's I once, all. I once hit a kid. Oh, God. And the bench, mm-hmm. the be- I hit him into the bench and the bench door yeah. opened, Cam. Oh, yeah. It, We've opened. And the kid broke his arm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Oh, you could got you, you. You got Andy Strickland. Could you? Um, could you imagine just getting? Well, I'd be pissed that then no one shut the fucking. Door. No, it was closed. It's not like at you. No, it was face. closed. I hit him so hard it opened oh, it up. Oh god, it went right through it. I bet you fucking killed him, Andy. <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> Jesus, Christ. Andy, you don't even wear shoulder pads. What are you talking about? I I did in, in the real game. I would. So you hit this guy through the boards and he hurt himself? So I was at a party one night. Oh, no. This is well, like during college. Out. This kid comes you up. He knocked out the quarterback. He banged his girlfriend. What else? No, he comes up to me and he said, hey, dude, you hit me. And I went into the bench when we were in high school and I broke my arm. Oh, were you like sorry about that? I was like, oh, man, sorry. Like, you, want a, you want a beer? There's a gas hey. station down the road. Here, dude. <laughs> hey, you want a beer? Yeah, sure. Well, down the road. There's he was, a gas no, he was very cool. That's a cool story, Andy. You ever had that happen? And to you know, people believe you too. I s- Cam. people will believe you on this. Okay, but on a, I, I but see everybody anytime. No, you I let say, people know I'm being I serious. Anytime I say hit somebody, like you can go on YouTube and see it. I know. Or this is kind of like. I wish well, this one was on YouTube. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not. I've got my highlight videos. I think maybe post it, <laughs> Andy. Post it because I say I will retweet they only, the fuck out. Do you have any highlight? Okay, please, but here's the problem. Please do here's it. the problem. Andy, you'll help our podcast. Okay, but here's do. the problem with that. This is where you come in. How, where it's on a VHS value, tape. So how do you do it? Type B. So how do I do that, Brody? It's on a VHS tape. You take it into like a oh God, video Brody's place. Like, you know, they got to transfer it to like some your digital highlights, format. It might aliens might have to fucking. But the problem is every game back in high school was not. I, videotape. I, I know. So only a hand selection of like the games I that were on local know. cable access. I know. And oh, they replay it the next day. Oh man, 
Dude, show me those fucking <laughs> sick. You're probably crushing guys. Were you ever in a video game? Yeah. Did you ever play yourself? Yeah. I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what was your rating? I don't Were you in the 60s? You could look it up. <laughs> I, remember, I Yeah, for like... Did they have years. ratings back then? Yeah. 10 years I was on. Do you ever put that in still? I would put... I, when I was in the gaming, you know, I'd, I'd pay, make my guy like... <laughs> the Hawk of When you were into gaming. That yeah. sounds so... Uh, what what, what does that mean? Andy. I was... I was uh, chilling. When uh, I was in the game, were you like perfect? Were you competing? Well, I was going out that night and making love to sweet women. But that day, I was probably playing games. You know, gaming. My buddies. I don't like that term. Whatever. I think it sounds. That's all just say like when I would play like video. Hey, did games. I not party enough for you, Andy? Do I look like the fucking kids now? I've like heard, I got addicted to every single fucking thing possible. I've heard I other partied, like, former hardcore. players publicly like, say? say on podcasts, nobody went harder than than them. Who said that? I've heard other people say that. And I done near died, dude. <laughs> like I don't like you want to like, <laughs> make that a competition. You want to talk to my who, wife? Who partied you know, harder? You want to talk to my parents, my wife <laughs> about it? Come on, it's horrible. It's not mm. good, but it all worked out. We're good now. Hey, man, it's everything happens now. for a reason. I, I got your jammed path up. Path is your Look, path. Look, I joke about everything with all you guys, yes. and I love all you, but I I went through hell, dude. And I so when Andy like tries to say hey, people, no, no one parties. Your I'm path like is your path. Not good. No one party harder than I did. I did either. Oh, Andy, come on. The life of the party. You are. You're like, Where's Andy at? <laughs> this party. Wait, what's going on with this party? Are you? Dre- oh, Andy's not here. Are you dressing up tonight? No. Why? For the kids that I knock feel, on the door. I feel like shit this morning. I feel like shit. Why? I don't know, man. I had to get up so early. You know, I had to do the radio show, and then I had to wait and come here and do this. And then yeah. I, I like, there's no one like. No one trick or treats in our neighborhood. It's rainy and shitty outside. Like I thought, Halloween was supposed to be. Yeah. Like if I'm Halloween, mm-hmm. the director of Halloweeny, I'd be like, no, let's do like Thanksgiving and have the Saturday on the last no, month. No, no, no. Okay, Andy. Just because there's a significance to October 31st. I know. It's about uh, that I know. Chucky doll would fuck you up. Boy. I'll boot that fuck thing. <laughs> that thing would crush your dude. You, you have listen. Let me tell you something, dog. D- tell me, <laughs> dog. <laughs> Dog the bounty. Tell me. Dog Tell the me. bounty hunter. Is he alive? You kind of look like him. I do? A little bit. If you had longer hair. That means my face is beat the fuck up. That's what you're saying. You guys have the same beard. Although you have like an Andre Jesus, Agassi. He beard. says I look like dog. I think he's dead. Is he? I kind of think so. His wife was badass too. Was she? Very tough. I, don't know. I think they're both kind of goofy. And you say I look like him. His face is like. Really? He looks like a catcher. Okay, well then, well Jesus. then, let's not well, let's not you. Let's then. not go with that. Let's it. not go with that. Good God, I always pump your fucking looks up. Let's he not go with that. I, okay, my face looks like a goddamn. He, I man. thought he was like a no. Movie he's a movie fucking star. joke. Had movie star looks or something. No, right? no. Mm. He looks like shit. What are you watching nowadays? Anything? Oh good? well, I watch. Uh, here's what I watch over the weekend. Skin. And don't bore us here. Like I mean, I watched get to it. a documentary. All oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. It's fucking horrifying. And I'm a conspiracy theorist. In a way. Not too much. Like the Epstein thing, of course. Other things, I'm like, ah, go fuck yourself. Dude, okay. Can I, I ask can you... you ask me a question? I got that. I can't I, even, this like, is taking too long. It. I got to ask you this before we go. Walker in Utah, we'll check that out, and then no, we'll get them to that. Skinwalker Ranch Skinwalker. in Utah. No, okay. seriously. The dude that had the hammer... In Pelosi's house? <laughs> what is, un- is that under- all about? Underwear. No, that's not true. I know. They better come out and said that's false. I... And the people who reported that said it was inaccurate. There's bizarre things that are going on with that. You're the third in line to presidency. Where's your security? How do you get in the house? Isn't that weird? With a hammer? Is there somebody else that no. opened a door? Can I just, besides what happened doing that, that, that's You're one not of the richest angle. men in the world. You know, most he pop- is? Yes. In. Oh, he is a magician. What does he do? On is trading. he a politician? Fun, no. He's a trader. M- Paul? He, Paul Pelosi. Look at his fucking net worth. Nancy Pelosi makes 120 grand a year. Okay. What do you think she's worth? Probably 30. $125 million. Okay, Why good is for that? her. Good Paul for her. Pelosi. Wow, he's always up to date with all these stocks. Don't get political. Oh, my God. Well, you just did it. Do not like that. You just did it. I'm asking and everybody's you. And there was like, this is attached to January so 6th. So that's the... Look s- at the fucking weirdo's house. He had 
Just look at his house online. Who, Dave, the guy who the did weirdo. it? The weirdo. Dave? Did like he know Paul it? Pelosi's like one of the richest men, and he just got off a... I don't like, think he knew him. But you know hey, what? Hey, you know what? Fuck politicians. Hold I don't on. want anybody getting jammed no. up with a hammer. But can like, I just say all that? The, all these fucking can politicians. Can I just say... Nancy probably like, is he not dead? Oh, that sucks. Can I just say that... Uh, Anybody who's getting attacked with a hammer, dude, yeah, I, I, know, just, I think that is a brutal. Where's your security? That yeah, is a brutal You're attack. You're third in line for the president. Like what? That's a brutal You're attack. You're fourth in line. That's whatever. a brutal attack. That no guy shit. should go to prison for how long? No shit. For a long time. Like how long? Just like if you have a gun and you have you commit a crime with a gun, just like in North County, St. Louis, that happens every fucking day, and they let him out two fucking weeks. If you have a gun that's illegal, he should be in jail for 10 years. Okay. Boom. Yeah, you're right. Boom. That's how you stop crime. I'm with you. Fucking Paul Pelosi. Where's your fucking security? Where how about are the they? cameras? Yeah. You don't, what, what? You're in the wealthiest part of San Francisco? What? I know. What's going on? Oh, this guy's I like, know. This guy's a goofy looking what, a fucking a hippie. What happened here? Yeah. Confusing. I know. Listen, there's other bigger things in the world to deal with mm-hmm. besides Paul fuck Pelosi. He, dude, this guy, Dave, broke in the house with yeah, a man. hammer. Whatever. And Paul Pelosi. I called a, fr- a friend of mine. I called a friend of mine who owns a. These wealthy fucking, these guys, hey. insider trading guys, like, oh, fuck you. I called a friend fuck of mine you. who owns a security yeah, company. Oh, fuck. And I have, um, I have referred to him to several blues players, several people. I just want you to be protect and, your family. And he I don't is, care about Paul Pelosi. He's now. putting some new cameras in my. Please. And you're. Yeah, you need oh, a yeah. weapon outside. I mean. But I always, you need a weapon. I've always had the alarm system and the security system. But I, I don't felt even like want to talk about it because I don't want anybody like knowing that. No, I have weak. security, but I just want okay. to make sure like if they have a sec- if they monitor the cameras, are they looking at me in the war room? Everybody's looking at you, Andy. Speak out loud and then look on Facebook and see what pops up. Have you Speak seen that? Hey. Out loud mm-hmm. about a product. And look on your fucking yeah. social Elon media. Elon Musk is trying to make us pay 20 bucks a month to have a... Uh, take my fucking check mark. <laughs> give a fuck. <laughs> fuck Twitter. I like Elon, man. He's cool. Fuck Twitter. Everybody's like, they use the in bomb. Yeah, that's false. LeBron. Always listen to LeBron when he posts things. Bronny? Lebr- Bronny's like, I mean, God, I'm getting harassed again. Bronny. LeBron. <gasps> Bronny. No, he's just such a fucking whatever. Fuck him, too. He's very cool. <laughs> yeah, he's totally cool. They just he won. Called the, out that cop. They that just didn't, that helped out that poor little black girl that was getting stabbed. Yeah. They just won that. Um, Fuck him. They just won their first game of the year. Cool. He's so cool. They're like one and six, Cam. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> What's tomorrow? <laughs> Nerdiest superstar ever. Really? Fuck yeah. I'd rather you be a dick. I like the Mannings. Hell yeah, dude. They're, They're cool. cool. I'm trying to get Eli. You know who else is a nerd? Russell uh, Wilson. Jesus. What's his deal? What is he doing on social He was so media? much cooler in Seattle. Patrick Mahomes is so fucking cool. Besides his brother and his wife. His brother's TikTok. He follows oh, his brother dude. on no, TikTok. No, but Patrick's cool as shit. He's cool as shit. He's fucking cool. I like Lamar Jackson. Fucking cool as shit. He's cool as shit. I like, uh, who else? I like uh, Old Boy from the Bills. No, dude. Josh oh, yeah. Allen's fucking badass. And I like badass. Joe Burrow, dude. Joe Burrow's fucking cool as shit. You know, I like uh, Steph Curry, man, and NBA. Steph fucking Curry's cool, cool as shit. shit. Like, he's just fucking cool. Yeah. LeBron's not. Just not. His social media posts, like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, he's not. Bubble. Like, you're a bill. Somebody spray paint him. No, he didn't. He lies about shit on social mm-hmm. media to make Does a point. Does he? Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. No, you can't do that. Don't be a liar. Stirs it up. Oh, my God, the in-bombs. No, that's, a f- that's mm-hmm. false. Hey, we've got some good interviews coming up, too, man. Some good shit. And uh, including this one with uh, yeah. Zach Ronaldo. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed yep. that. Love man. all you guys. Yeah, for sure. As always, uh, Hair Club brings us the Cam and Strick podcast. Hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Right. Sign up for your first consultation from our landing page. Okay? It'll save you lots of money. Yep. Um, first form. Some people call it first farm. No, it's first form, Cam. First farm. <laughs> I'm about to attack one of those, uh, not with a hammer, nothing crazy like that, but I'm about to attack one of those protein bars as soon as I get out of here, dude. The uh, chocolate covered dude, they're pretzel. Damn, they I put it. mine in the freezer. I tell you that. They make it. I've I've discovered that. I know. Don't ever call hey, me on a Friday no, night when my hey, kids are sleeping. Isn't that a good feeling? Listen to me. When you take protein and you're healthy, yeah. it makes you horny. Mm, yeah. Which when you're time out, when you're horny, you're confident. You're like, yeah, like you feel good. Like, what are we doing? Let's go. Seven. And then the kids go to bed. You're like, mm. girl, 
Come here. Me and Laurie went out to the 17th. There you get that. Oh, no, I. <laughs> I did, we erased that. Oh, did you? Yeah. I can't. Okay, so I made love with Kate on the seventh uh, green last week, and I had Brody delete it, but I'm going to confess. You're going to leave that one in? I'll leave this one in. I did um, make why? Because I said it? Fuck it. I made love to her on the seventh. I, it's right behind my fucking You go house. on the green. I, I go, don't give I a go on fuck. the tee box. I spend my money there. I love everybody. I'm sweet to everybody. Kate and I made goddamn love on the fucking yeah. green of the seventh. So I, 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 I wouldn't want to be putting on that green ever no, again, we, actually. We christened that, it as that our green hole. I is, don't give a shit. That green is damaged for life. No, it's not. It's tarnished. My sperm's no good. I am not reproducing. So everybody knows. Tarnished. I don't know what my problem is with that. Yeah, well. Sorry, I, I abused myself. First I, Farm. First Form. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Use our link and our link only. Yeah. And Help get some out. damn vitamins and some oh, and some hoodies. I like when I pee when I'm on vitamins. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah. You know, I'm, I like, those, my I like those shaker cups. Yeah, you should. Um, I am just a protein son of a bitch, man. That's what I am. You look jacked. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't even need to. Th- it's not all about protein, man. It's the fruits and the veggies and yeah. the vitamins and the bars Absolutely. and the drinks, the energy drinks. And my kids making sure they've got children's vitamins, Cam. I bought my kids these little gummies, these uh, children's uh, vitamins. And they take, well, good. The, they take those at God night. Goddamn. Goddamn right. God dang boy. <laughs> so first form, check that out. Uh, waggle golf, get your waggle on Hell yeah. and do it today and get those hoodies and get those uh, quarter zips. Get Hell your yeah. waggle on. Waggle golf. Golf all year round, golf in style. Golf, waggle golf. Also, Car Shield, 800 857 2481. Mention the promo code CAM. I know it's embarrassing. <laughs> Listen, people, I'm just telling you. All my people out there in Saskatchewan, Alberta, the Alberta beef out there, all y'all, my people, I know it's embarrassing, but just do it. It'll save you money, 10%, as a matter of fact. With CAM as the yeah. promo code with Car Shield. 800-857-2481. Bellman and Bellman.com, Buick GMC, Chrysler Dodge, Jeep Ram. Everyone is approved, CAM. Everybody. Bellman.com, B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Danny Boy, Kenny, Dale, everybody. We love Dale, our friends over Kenny, there. What at? <laughs> at Bellman. Hell yeah. Sparks are flying. And so are kids at a rink near you because they got their skate sharper the right mean? way. Oh, yeah, flying around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Cruising around. NHL players, man. 25 dressing rooms use the Spark Skate Sharpener. Listen, anybody out there who skates, stop going to the damn hockey shop to sharpen your skates. Get a skate <laughs> sharpener in your house. Takes up no room. Easy to clean. Incredible. Easy to set up. It's a life changer. Use the promo code CAM and STRICK. And it's going to save you money. Damn right. This deal won't last forever, by the way, so do it now. Cam and Strick will save you lots of money. Yeah. Uh, who else, Cam? Get our hats, by the way, camandstrick.com. Check out those hats from our boy over there with Victor Hockey. Adam, making the best hats. People, like, reach out to me, like, who made your hats? I'm like, just settle down. Dude, they're good as shit. Go get one of our hats. They're nice, yeah. They're good as shit. Yes. You can buy one right now online, so get it today. With uh, camandstrick.com. All right, this has been Zach Ronaldo, episode number 210. 210, baby. Let's get it. Was that your playing weight? Yeah, 212. Yeah. Was it? 212. 212. Yep. And what are you at now? 245. Oh, that's good. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm obese as fuck. It's not good. <laughs> God, uh, help me. <laughs> no, I'll be all right. All right, this has been episode 210. Yeah, that's awesome, man. When we get to 245, we'll see where you're at at that time. Why okay. you mad? Make- <laughs> Good interviews coming up. Hey, always, if you missed oh, one, no. go to camastrick.com. <sighs> We've had a few people give us some negative reviews because oh, of the, the because of Holly. I'm sorry about that, guys. We win a little too much on that. We blame it on Holly, though. But if you get Holly, he to come got on. political. Yeah, but okay, you got Brett Hall on your fucking podcast talking politics. Yeah, he might have went overboard, and maybe I jumped in on it. I'm sorry. Sorry about that, but, like, it's different. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I yeah. love all y'all. Yeah. Seriously. So crush that like button, give us some five stars, and yeah. leave us a review. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for everything. This has been the Cam and Strick Podcast. See you, homies. <laughs>